Mayor, everyone except Council Member Iglesias is here. Um, she did send me a message that she will connect with us soon after the meeting starts. All right, so let's go ahead and start. I hereby call this meeting to order. Can we uh, do a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Becerra? Here. Council Member Iglesias? Council Member Peñalosa? Here. Council Member Sarmiento? Here. Council Member Solorio? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vegas? Here. Mayor Pulido? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. So, so with that, um, let's go ahead. I, I know, do you want to make any announcement, Madam Clerk, about people that can reach this on YouTube or anything of that nature? I think, I think the residents already know the process, but if for the time of the public hearing item or non-agenda items they, that are going to be discussed, you may comment by calling the number that's listed on our website, um, and you would participate at that time, and we'll unmute you and let you know that you have three minutes to speak. All right. So with that, um, why don't we, uh, let's go ahead and start the... Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, if you can all stand wherever you are, we're going to do the pledge. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all. Did that come across, Madam Clerk? Yes. An invocation. Okay, uh, is, is Jack uh, Abilene there, our police chaplain? Is he on the line? Yes, he is. Go ahead, if you could do the invocation, please. Thank you, sir. Father, we're so thankful this afternoon for uh, this way that we can meet together and continue to carry forth certainly important city business. We do pray that, Lord, in these uh, difficult times that you would be with our citizens, that you would with our council, that you would give them great wisdom, you keep them healthy and well, watch over and protect them, and may their decisions tonight honor you and the things that you would have to accomplish with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, as we go into the consent calendar, I know I got a, a request from... Um, uh, I believe Peña Loza and Ceci, we need her on item, I think, 11A, 11B. So we're going to push that towards the end of the consent calendar uh, for the moment. Um, but uh, are there any other items on the consent calendar that people want to pull? Move the balance. Mr. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Councilmember Becerra, um, I'd like to pull item uh, 11B and 19C. All right. 11B, I was already going to push to the end. I entertain, if there are no other items, I'd entertain a motion on the balance, Move the balance. of the consent calendar. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, may I uh, please pull 25B? Okay. Any other items? If not, I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> so moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote. There's a motion on the balance in the consent calendar. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Councilmember Becerra? Yes. Councilmember Iglesias? Councilmember Peñalosa? Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento? Yes. Councilmember Solorio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Viegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Now, um, I believe we need a. a Council Member uh, Iglesias for a couple of these items, but uh, there's some we can take on without her. Let's go with those items. Uh, I believe uh, Council Peñalosa, didn't you have an item that yeah. you just pulled? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I pulled 25B, which is uh, approved municipal facilities license agreement with new singular wireless PCS. And um, I just had a question for uh, uh, the city manager and, and maybe... Um, the executive director of public works might want to chime in on this. Uh, just had a couple of questions on 
what uh, other companies we we contract out with, uh, or or should I say, allow to use our our city-owned utility poles? I know this uh, this contract specifically calls out uh, or agreement singular wireless, but. I, I just want to know which other companies we work because I know I've seen Verizon come across and and other entities that I just don't want to keep, you know, on, with one staff report and one uh, company, it, it doesn't look like a lot and it looks very minimal. But when you, you know, next month we'll have Verizon come forward again and then the following month we'll have. So before you know it, we keep seeing these antennas that are not that uh, athletic. As, yeah. <laughs> They're not aesthetically pleasing um, to the public driving by. You see them. Uh, they're huge. They're not uh, small or, or really much hidden. Um, so it's, it's, uh, I, I want to know what other companies we're doing this for uh, or with and, and when is it going to, to stop. Like when can we say, you know, that's enough. We've had it with enough of these cell towers on our light poles. I said it at the last meeting and I'll say it again that I came in here with the idea to put all our utilities underground and it just keeps seems like we keep adding more and more at every council meeting and I receive dozens of emails every week from constituents throughout the city that you know these things are ugly and they are. Um, I see them daily so uh, Madam City Manager if anyone or Nabil is out there. Uh, certainly a council member Penalosa so we expect that we're going to enter into three different MLAs. This is the second one that's before you for approval, so we do anticipate a third one will be coming for your consideration. I will defer to the Public Works Director because he can talk about there are poles that we own that we do enter into these agreements to place equipment on, but there are also infrastructure poles out there that we don't own that they can go directly to the utility provider and also place equipment on those. So, Nabil, if you can speak to the difference between those two, that would be great. And then maybe give him the names of the, the one they are already approved and the third one that we anticipate sure um, we have been negotiating with three main companies that are providing small cell or uh, uh, 5g or 4g 5g type of uh, cellular service they are Verizon which we have a uh, an agreement with uh, AT&T which is the item uh, before you tonight we are also in conversation with Crown Castle that's our third uh, provider that we will be coming forward uh, with uh, soon to be able to uh, install small cell antennas within the city. Now, uh, providers like Verizon, AT&T, and C Crown Castle have two options in installing small cell antennas. One option is to use the existing Edison power poles to install their antennas on. Uh, that is uh, controlled by the PUC, and uh, those uh, providers have agreements with Edison to be able to use their poles to install the antenna. The agreement before you tonight and the one that we engaged in uh, with Verizon a month or so ago allows for those providers to use the city-owned light poles to install antennas which are much aesthetically pleasing antennas than the one you will see on the Edison ports. Those we have uh, control over in terms of location, a little bit more than the rest. Um, so once the AT&T and Verizon uh, start applying for um, the use of our street lights, we will have a little bit more control on the, on the look and the location. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so you said we would have more control on the look of it and the location? Uh, yes. You know, the location is these antennas, Councilman, need to be within, I want to say, 300 feet apart. So you will see more of them. Uh, but, again, the ones that will be installed on the light poles, it will look like a cylinder on top of the pole with similar color and a uh, little bit more um, kind of hidden, no wiring, no uh, other boxes that are appearing. Um, 
So the look will be a lot better on the light poles. And are is that are pictures of these uh, cylinder antennas available at all? Because uh, I know they weren't in the staff yeah. report, and I have seen them previously uh, in previous staff reports, and and those. As much as we can sit here and say they are aesthetically pleasing, uh, I do not believe that they are. Uh, are there pictures available for these in particular? Yes, we are actually we are working on a memo for council on this item to explain to you what uh, would they look like. But yes, they are much better looking than the ones that you've seen and familiar with um, that are installed on the power poles, the wooden poles. Those are different. Uh, the ones that we are engaging in tonight in this agreement with the AT&T and Verizon before that would be a lot uh, better looking um, installations than the one you are familiar with on the power pole again. So how, how can we uh, approve an agreement if we, if we do not know what they look like? Um, I mean, you might know, Nabil, but, but the public yes. nor I know uh, what they look like. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we do have a design standards that have been approved by uh, by the city or by actually public works here. So we, we went back and forth and agreed on the looks of these uh, installations. We will share that with you. Like I mentioned, we are working on a uh, on a presentation to council and also to the community to let them know about the installations and how they look like. At, with, and, that, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll share that with you soon. And that's great that we have that, that we're working on that presentation, but we should make that presentation available to the community before these agreements are approved. And it's, a, you know, we should notify them of a potential antenna coming into their, their backyard versus letting them know after the fact, hey, by the way, th this got put in on a pole right behind your house yesterday. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of it. Uh, it I would... Um, no. That's what no, it, there is a process. There is a process of notification, and uh, what you have seen so far is what Ed, what Verizon has been sending out to the community to let them know about the installation. But again, uh, there is two do different types of installations that we have. We have the ones that go on the power pole and the ones that are be going on the light pole. So they're different, but there is a notification that all providers must provide to the residents before the installation is. Uh, is done and complete, and uh, so there is there is a notification process. Well, that's good. And uh, you you said that each one of these has to be uh, 300 feet apart from one another. Um, can do we allow more than two providers to install antennas on one pole? Uh, not in this case. No, no. Co 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 sorry, co location is not allowed on those. There is not enough room for more than one provider to be on the pole. Okay. And um, there was one more. I, I, I know that uh, Council Member uh, Sarmiento has uh, an item on the agenda uh, tonight uh, that is something that it's, is important uh, that we, in regards to citywide uh, or in certain areas, uh, public access. It can, can we, are we in communication with these different providers and entities to be able to use that infrastructure that they're putting into our pools, making our streets look uglier than they already are, um, to provide uh, access to, to wireless internet? Or is it just for their uh, benefit? This particular installation are for their benefit. We, during our negotiation, we talked about providing service to the residents here, but that was not a feature that they're willing to provide. Okay. I, I guess uh, that's it, um, Mr. Uh, Saba, uh, pertaining to this item. Um, I personally would like to uh, make a motion to move um, the, the, or push the item out uh, at least 30 days until we see this presentation and get actual um, exhibits and, and, and images of what these are going to look like before we can approve an agreement. Is that, uh, is that okay, Madam City uh, Manager? Are we going to run in any deadlines or anything if we do that? Uh, no. A 30-day continuance? 
And no, Mayor, you'll be okay on that. Just to point out, though, again, we've already approved one MLA, and this is the same type of an MLA. So, but we certainly can well, delay it. I suggest a 30-day continuance, Council Member. We, we, we do have AT&T in the... Uh, I, I believe that the provider AT&T representatives are here to speak on... Yeah, but I, but I think Council Member wants a chance to sit down and review things, and we're not going to sure. do that right now. I, I, Why don't you just go for 30 days? Yeah, just want to say that I appreciate them being on the line. Uh, thank you. Uh, for for listening, um, but we still I would still like to see that presentation and what exactly this this is going to look like, and make sure that the community is aware and the presentation that Public Works is putting together for the residents is available before any more of these items are approved. Um, so I don't know if we could have the presentation within the next two weeks, Mr. Saba. And, and, and push this item out 30 days, that would be my, my request. Sure. Okay. And what I'd suggest is any council member is interested, sit down and you know, we can review this and then we can put it on the website, let the community see everything we're doing. So with that, we have a motion for a 30-day continuance. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Becerra. So, okay, roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Becerra. Yes. Council Member Iglesias. Council Member Peñalosa. Yes. Council Member Sarmiento. Yes. Council Member Solorio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Villegas. Yes. Mayor Pulido. Yes. Okay, that's six one with Council Member Iglesias absent. Mr. Mayor, I have a general comment right. since I is, couldn't is make there it any earlier. Other item we can take on before Council on Events comes? If not, let's just move on to the agenda. Mr. Mr. Mayor, well, I'm not sure if you could hear me. I have ahead. some comments because I didn't have the chance earlier. Just a quick thing. I think at some point moving forward, maybe though we can disconnect sharing with the public what our policy is versus approving or not approving some of these vendors in part because we've already approved some as well as I think we approve the master policy, right? So I don't know why we would do uh, something too different, but I do get the point that uh, the council members make in terms of the, the public interface side. Uh, and then maybe staff, too, in the interim could provide uh, the council kind of the history on, on these fees because it was kind of heavily um, – discussed at, at the statewide level maybe about three years ago and so they came up with a lot of these rules including fees and the the counterpoint to concerns about making them nicer and other things is ultimately it means more cost to consumers on the cell phone side and we all know that we have pretty expensive cell phones already uh, expenses and so that's the I think the legislature and the governor's uh, consideration but I think it'd be helpful for uh, the council and the public as well that's all thank you for that so Mayor, is there any other item we can take on right now? Go ahead. Yes, Mayor. I believe Council Member Becerra has pulled 19C that we haven't covered yet. Go ahead, Council Member Becerra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I pulled this item just because I had a couple of questions for staff. Um, Madam City Manager, is uh, Stephen Mendoza available? Yes, he is, sir. Okay. Um, I, I believe this would fall under his umbrella. So I just wanted wanted to ask a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, thank you for the report. Um, one of my main things that I, 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 I'm really encouraged by is seeing that we're, we're getting the applications out to the community for rehabilitation of existing homes. And I noticed in the report, it looks like, let's see, according here, it says due to the coronavirus, application processing for the down payment assistance program single family and mobile home rehabilitation programs are currently on hold there are not uh, currently nine applications for the programs uh, i'm sorry 13 total for the programs why are those applications on hold in regards to their processing certainly council member this is steven mendoza thank you for the question um as you know, the, um, our down payment assistance program and our mobile home rehab program and our single family rehab program 
require inspections of the units to verify the improvements that are necessary to be completed and to verify deficiencies in the unit that will need to be corrected if we are to provide assistance with them. The on-site inspections place the homeowner and our staff at risk of infection due to COVID-19 and therefore we place these programs on hold until we release some of, relax some of our restrictions regarding COVID. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's a very, very valid uh, reason not to send um, our folks out there. Um, another question I have is it looks like 165 applications uh, were sent out for the uh, down payment assistance program and 13 were received, which is less than 8%. Do you have an idea of why the city is not receiving more completed applications for this program? There's some fundamental things that housing costs has never been higher is one of one of the reasons. When you see these programs be very successful, it's at a time when home prices are lower. So that's when cities beef up their their programs to assist it because assist these families because our money goes further in a down market. In a higher market, it takes much more of an incentive, or should I say subsidy, for each homeowner and they are challenged with finding a home that meets the requirements of the program when there's so few homes on the market and so many ones at a reasonable reach. And it's times like this in a high market when they look at condos more so. And, and that makes sense. And I, I bring this up because I really would like to see us as a city really go towards strengthening home ownership. And programs like this, I think, gives our residents, those that have been here, a chance to become homeowners. I mean, these are folks throughout our city that, you know, have been renting and, you know, they're working multiple jobs and they're saving up. And, and I agree, Mr. Mendoza, that we see an economy that does not favor a lot of folks that are struggling, but with these sorts of programs that could help them, I would like to see us try to do whatever we can to bolster those. Um, and hopefully as we, we progress, there'll be more opportunities to do that. Um, one other, oh, not one, but another question I have is, um, in, in your report under the rehabilitation program construction progress, uh, you mentioned that each homeowner is given a list of contractors that have been screened by staff or license and insurance requirements. Does that include that list? Does it include contractors that use uh, union labor? Um, it does. It doesn't exclusively require them to, though it does provide them a list of some with union labor and some without. But it doesn't categorize the contractors. The contractor is still, okay. yeah, it doesn't categorize the contractors. Well, no, I appreciate you including uh, some union labor options for our residents because as the report states, obviously the homeowners are allowed to select whichever contractor, you know, as long as they meet the license and insurance requirements. So I just appreciate that the uh, union labor folks are being included. Um, as for any other questions at this point, I think I'm good. So uh, thank you, Mr. Mendoza, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions? If not, I entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to receive and file this report. I'll second. second. Is there a second? Second by Councilmember Penaloza. Roll call vote, please, Madam uh, City uh, Clerk. Councilmember Becerra? Yes. Councilmember Iglesias? Councilmember Peñalosa? Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento? Yes. Councilmember Solorio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Vegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Six um, um, Let's Member. just go on. We'll come back to 11 a and B. Uh, why don't we just go on to uh, continue on with our agenda for the 68. moment. Is that okay with everybody? Ms. Oh. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is Councilman Penaloza. I had a question just uh, for the clerk. Sure, go ahead. Um, I noticed that, that the uh, are, are we going, moving forward, are we going to be allowing the public to comment on items uh, that are not public comment or, or uh, hearings at all? So for the other agenda items, you mean? Because well, right now not, they're... Not this city council meeting today, but I know mm -hmm. last week I, or last city council meeting I brought up uh, the question of why the public can't comment on every agenda item like we have when it's an open meeting. And uh, 
You they, said that they can. They just sent, submit it by um, e-comment. So, and you'll see the numbers of e-comments in support and opposition, um, and then they're all posted on the website. So, for the public hearing items and the non-agenda um, items are the ones that we open up the lines to. So, if you're asking for all of the agenda items to for the um, lines to be open to, um, I could definitely do that. I didn't. You know, I could talk to the mayor and see if that's something we want to move forward Why with. Why don't we talk about it offline and yes. uh, pros and cons, but if we want to open it up, we we can. I just know they're trying to handle, uh, you know, the technology and all, and I think we are getting a good number of comments from the public. But why don't we follow up on that, Council Member, and we'll come back. Okay, thanks, But Mr. I Mayor. thank you for your question. Thank just, you. Yeah, it was just uh, my ask just to, to provide uh, further input and transparency to the public. Thank you. And then, Mayor, the Thank closed you. session report, we did not, we skipped over that section. All right, on let's the go ahead and do that now. Madam City Attorney, anything to report out of closed session, please? No, we had several closed session items this evening, but there is no reportable action. All right. So then um, our next item, would we be out of the consent calendar for now? I know we got to come back to 11 A and B. Yes, so now we are on business calendar item 60 A. Okay, I know we had a little bit of discussion on this in closed session. Um, uh, uh, comments, thoughts? And Mayor, if I could just announce quickly, um, we did receive a, a huge number of correspondence. We received 35 that were in opposition to rent freeze and 144 in support of. And that is all available on the website. Okay. Um, again, the pleasure of the council. We could uh, simply leave things alone. Um, I believe it runs out right now on the, at the end of May. Um, and that's what I would recommend, but I think the city, uh, this is mainly a legal issue, I believe. Um, and I believe the city attorney has, has spoken to all of us and is very confident that we're well within uh, legal uh, parameters to take the action that we, that the city, uh, that we took in empowering the city manager to take the action that she took. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Sarmiento. Um, I'll Please go, ahead. go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll go ahead and um, move that we uh, that we affirm the uh, the current order as as um, written and directed by the city manager. I did just want to comment for everybody and thank everybody who uh, who wrote us. And uh, you know, I, again, I think that this was an exercise, that a very unfortunate exercise, because I think that the city manager acted responsibly and within the vested rights that we extended to her um, uh, uh, to, to go ahead and you know uh, promulgate this um, this additional relief and uh, protection measure for our uh, residents this is uh, primarily a public health and safety uh, measure that she took knowing that um, you know there we are living in some very unprecedented times there are folks that uh, are uh, not only worried about um, you know just paying rent but also paying for food and medicine and just uh, their daily lives and we unfortunately um, have many many families and residents that um, have to make a choice sometimes between basic needs and and uh, and rent so uh, this isn't a rent rental forgiveness this isn't um, an indefinite um, uh, rent freeze or a, a, a prohibition on rent increase this is a very narrowly tailored measure that was drafted by the city manager at the request of um, uh, many uh, members of the council and um, also reviewed by the city attorney. So although that this may be um, uh, read by others or interpreted by others to be something that it isn't, this is a public health and safety measure. And I think it was very, very narrowly tailored when it was drafted. It has a very clear sunset period it doesn't go 
to an indeterminate um, uh, time. Um, it's not indefinite. It's set to sunset uh, and expire on the 31st of uh, this month, which is in 26 days. Um, and I know that um, staff in their report and also um, verbally have made sure that uh, uh, our friends at the California Apartment Association know that if there are any landlords uh, that have any uh, uh, issues or impacted or have any contractual obligations that they, they've extended to some of their tenants that um, you know, there was a pre-existing agreement to uh, adjust rent that they're free to contact the city attorney's office and hopefully she can she can opine on that but my understanding is from my conversations with her is that her office has made themselves available to address any questions that they have and and I think um, you know because we have a city that is 50 per six, 56 percent uh, uh, renters and tenants um, we have a special responsibility um, or a more immediate responsibility to try to address uh, uh, have uh, protections in place and um, and I was um, you know again a little offended by some of the um, suggestions that were made that the city manager acted outside her scope of authority that we granted to her uh, she certainly is well within her rights uh, to do this and it is part and parcel of a, a set and a series of relief measures that this city council took to protect its residents including the moratorium on uh, residential and commercial evictions the no shut off of utilities um, and and so on and so I um, you know I think that there's been quite a bit of legal analysis from our team and I think I feel pretty confident and I know that um, you know the landlords that uh, I've had conversations with um, certainly want to help more than harm or interfere with a person's uh, right to stay at home during this time unfortunately folks are impacted in many different ways and um, and you know this this um, uh, us playing with this issue or distorting this issue or using this issue as a political uh, uh, football is something that is really really uh, unfortunate because instead of giving people solace instead of giving people comfort knowing that we're trying to get them through this uh, moment um, we're having to explain and and talk about why we shouldn't rescind and I should just say that this was done um, again after we received an unsolicited message from the California Apartment Association uh, uh, recommending that we uh, freeze rent um, and uh, uh, recommending that those that uh, are uh, provide um, uh, uh, households to renters that they also freeze rent so I think that uh, the city manager acted extremely responsibly I'm certainly proud of all the other uh, executive orders that she's issued and I'm completely uh, supportive of that and so I just uh, wanted to make a motion to uh, have us affirm this uh, right. this order I'll Thank I'll second that Council. mr. mayor Madam Clerk, can you do a, a five minute thing and just talk to us because you know we don't have the lights or anything so just warn us if we're going too long please uh, we have a motion is there a second yeah I'll second that mr. mayor this is councilmember Penaloza and I just wanted to echo okay. what my what my colleague councilmember Sarmiento said uh, about the city manager I just wanted to thank her for her leadership throughout this whole crisis and to feel that she was uh, very uh, much in her duty to, to do this executive order and I appreciate that um, uh, the key word to remember here is is temporary and and like what was said earlier you know this is a temporary order that has a sunset which is May 31st and um, so I don't know why we're even having this discussion uh, I, 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 I frankly don't either, but thank you, Councilman Rank. There's no uh, or chance whatsoever anybody's going to sue us on this. Um, and I think if they do, we'll win. I think we're 100% within our, 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 our purview. But, um, but thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make the motion and the second. Other comments? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Solario, go ahead. Well, I think uh, Councilman no. Peñalosa has to speak first. So go ahead, Councilman. Then I'll follow. No, th th that was it. Those were my comments. No, no, no I'm sorry, but Becerra, Phil Becerra is wanting to speak. Th thank you, Councilman Solorio. Uh, yeah, no, I just want to echo the sentiments of, of my other colleagues here in regards to thanking our city manager. Uh, you know, the council, when we adopted our resolution back in March, we put quite a bit of responsibility on her shoulders. 
And I, for one, am very happy with how she has managed the city through this crisis. I think she has been prudent yet compassionate in her direction and her orders. And I think that this uh, executive order uh, exemplifies that. Uh, one thing I just want to point out as we are talking about tenants, you know, there's one thing that I, I do appreciate that the Apartment Association pointed out, and that is that we do have a lot of mom and pop landlords. And these are folks that have, you know, they're not owning big, gigantic apartment complexes. They're owning duplexes or sometimes maybe just a single unit. And, you know, the, the good thing I want to remind folks is that our governor, Governor Newsom, back on March 16th, requested that banks, credit unions, and mortgage lenders uh, implement some sort of moratorium on foreclosures. And less than a week later, the, the governor was able to announce that our nation's four largest banks and nearly 200 state chartered banks, credit unions, and mortgage lenders uh, stepped forward and provided relief for property owners throughout California, whether it was grace periods on mortgage payments, waiving mortgage-related late fees, uh, not starting any foreclosure sales or evictions. So I just wanted to put that out there that, you know, I think there's been some comments that I've received that this uh, our protections have been leaning more one way towards another, but I do appreciate my colleagues and our city manager for, you know, showing the compassion for our community and our residents by implementing this freeze. And I um, appreciate the way it has been implemented and I'll be supporting the, the motion as well. Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to speak if now's a good time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, you know, I, I do have very you know mixed feelings on, on this item. Uh, you know, on the one hand, I know that our city manager was just trying to do the right thing and and, and help our residents, uh, but this exercise is a good example of when there isn't good public review that sometimes there are little flaws or defects uh, left left in the policies, and that's what I worry about. What, what could be financial liability for the city and. Uh, the residents themselves, including renters. Um, just, just for context, because I looked at a variety of the similar ordinances that are out there that, that we've been hearing about, and really ours is the most aggressive. Uh, also, pretty much all the others exempted out uh, and made reference to Costa Hawkins and other rent control laws to make sure that there weren't any conflicts with that. Um, and all the cities that tend to have those are rent control cities, so they have an existing system for staffing it and answering questions and letting um, let, letting the, the, the landlords know, and, and, and we don't. Uh, I know references have been made to what we heard from the California Apartment Association and the call to action that they put out to their members. The key thing is their call to action was voluntary, not, not through regulations and not anything that would be in violation of... Uh, contracts or, or, or laws or other things. Um, I know too there's been made mention that this ex ends May 31st anyway, and that kind of is true, but the executive order also says it could be extended uh, under a variety of circumstances, especially if some aspects of uh, the governor's executive order is, is, is extended. Uh, and if we do feel so good about all the legality around this, colleagues, vote to extend it another year. Why, why, why let it... Uh, why let it sunset? Um, I, I do also just kind of general questions that don't need to be answered now, but maybe separately in writing from our, our, our city manager, I mean our city attorney, or if she, after I speak, would like to speak to them. Um, why didn't we limit the applicability of this just to residents, renters uh, that have an impact related specifically to COVID. Uh, our prior executive orders and the governor's executive orders are all very tailored uh, on that. Um, you know, I generally, you know, believe, as you've heard, that, you know, really it's through rental assistance. If we want to help renters, that's the way to do it. Uh, let's focus more on that. Uh, I also do think that um, uh, the Q&A that's on the city's website, uh, there's a Q&A, and I'll mention uh, one here, for example, uh, the question is, uh, my lease agreement has an automatic rental increase provision that takes effect before May 31st, and can my rent be increased? Uh, and it says, yes, the city's rent freeze is not intended to affect rent increases that take effect pursuant to an existing valid lease agreement or other contractual agreements. What that really means is a lot of folks 
can and will be seeing rent increases. Uh, it's my understanding that even at some of the affordable housing projects that we have in our city, uh, that uh, they're being allowed to increase rents, and maybe that could be another question that could be answered uh, by our city attorney afterwards. So for, for those reasons, I, I, I do just worry that even though this might sunset, that there is still a statute of limitations and uh, you know, landlords or others, including the mom and pops, and we've got many letters from them, they could sue and the city would be possibly liable. Uh, and then I worry that the renters themselves uh, may then also be uh, liable for any rent increases that, uh, uh, that, that they weren't allowed to, 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 to implement. Uh, so th those are the reasons why for those legal defects uh, that I believe exist uh, uh, in the executive order that I cannot uh, uh, su support just letting it phase out. I think it'd be better to, uh, uh, to rescind it uh, or to fix it because there's just too many flaws right now. Thank you. All right. Um, well, I, uh, anybody else? If not, let me just state that I think that's a matter of opinion. I support uh, our city attorney and what she's doing. I support the city manager. I even told the city manager, I'm not sure why this is even on the uh, agenda, frankly, because I think she acted completely within her rights. Uh, and I will be really, really surprised if anybody challenges, but if they do, uh, we'll fight it. And, uh, and if we were to extend it for a year, then a lot of people would, 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 uh, uh sue, but that's not what we're talking about. And the city attorney wouldn't recommend that either. Um, I understand that uh, Councilmember Iglesias will not be joining us this evening. I was just, uh, informed by our city clerk. So with that, if there's no additional comment, we have motion a second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Becerra? Yes. Council Member Peñalosa? Yes. Council Member Sarmiento? Yes. Council Member Soloria? No. Mayor Pro Tem Villegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Excuse me, Madam City Clerk, did, did Council Member Solorio vote? I didn't hear that. Yes. Uh, no. Council Member um, Solorio did vote, and he voted no. Okay, I didn't catch that. Thank you. Motion passes 5-1 absent Council Member Iglesias and Solorio dissented. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, one Madam item, City Clerk. Um, Madam City Go uh, ahead. Ms. Madam City Clerk. Go ahead. You read that, I think you read that backwards. You said. Uh, Motion passes. But you said Iglesias Five. said no. And no, I said Council Member Iglesias is absent and Council Member Solorio oh. dissented. Yes. Got that. Thank you. Wait, and is Councilwoman okay. Iglesias not joining us at all for the rest That's of the evening? That's correct. Not at all. She's not coming in at all tonight. Well, not surprising. So let's just continue. Um, item 60B. Any comments? Uh, yeah, I have a comment, Mr. Mayor. This is Councilmember Penaloza. Um, 60B was just to discuss the Orange County Superior Court Commissioner's order to release individuals with prior sexual assault convictions early and into the community. This is uh, in response to, as for those listening out there, we're all aware the numerous sex offenders that have been released um, under Commissioner Dane's authority, uh, court order, I believe, um, over the last couple of weeks uh, that have, you know, now been rearrested again for other crimes, you know, just causing harm in our community. And um, this was put forward because uh, initially I wanted to, you know, send a, a strongly worded letter or by ways of a, a letter or a resolution to, a, a, or, you know, denouncing these these uh, decisions that are having a detrimental effect on our community uh, and just causing more harm than, than anything. Um, we've all read uh, District Attorney Spitzer's uh, press releases and and uh, Sheriff Don Barnes's uh, press releases in relation to this. So it's just troubling all around uh, what, what's happening and uh, the the types of people that are being released onto our streets every single day having the county jail in our city is troubling and keeps me up at night and I don't have kids to worry about and 
and I don't have a, 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 a personal family that I have to look over and just the thought of these monsters lurking out on our streets with, with children and women and, and it, it's, it's troubling and it's, uh, I don't know what we can do legally to, you know, I don't think we could reverse these decisions, but just moving forward, um, whatever options we can do as a city to stand against the, these uh, numerous different uh, court decisions that are being, um, which is, again, I don't understand the legality behind it or what we could do, but just wanted to state my strong opposition to uh, these decisions, specifically by Commissioner Dane, appointed court commissioner. Thank you for that. <laughs> Any other comment? I, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, yes, Juan, go ahead. Vegas. I just wanted to thank the uh, Santa Ana Police Department for rearresting one of those uh, individuals that was let loose um, that shouldn't have been freed in the first place, but you know that's between uh, the commissioner and the governor. And uh, we will stay vigilant here in the city, and I'm sure our police department will continue to do the great job that, doing, that they're doing, trying to protect us. And uh, this is just terrible when um, these individuals, um, you know, the commissioner, for example, is, are um, being a little reckless, in my opinion, for, uh, you know, for the safety of the public. That's my comment. Thank you for that. Other council uh, members comment? Mr. Mayor, Councilman Becerra here. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to echo the pro tem's comments in thanking our police department for arresting one of the seven that was released early from jail. Um, I could go on about what this particular individual did within 17 days after being released uh, early from only serving 71 days of a six month sentence. But I think if I did that, we'd be beeping out half of the uh, broadcast. I mean, this particular individual has done some very disturbing and disgusting uh, crimes. And much, much of what he did was in this community, was in Santa Ana. This isn't somebody that's roamed the county. He's done it right here. Um, I know Councilmember Penaloza sent a letter to uh, Commissioner Dane, and I know, Mayor, thank you as well for doing the same. Um, I sent a letter expressing my disappointment that this person, this commissioner, would do such a thing. And to do it under the guise of a pandemic is just that much more disturbing. And I'd just like to close my comments in thanking our district attorney, Todd Spitzer, for bringing this solution, or solution, excuse me, the situation to light and to the public's attention. And as the pro tem said, I uh, concur that we will stay vigilant. Uh, these sorts of things are just atrocious, and we do have to remain on guard about that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, request with the council's uh, concurrence um, I want to go meet with a presiding judge um, and echo all of our sentiments to that uh, judge that oversees this commissioner. Um, I really don't think this commissioner is on the right track to ever become a judge. Uh, and I'd like to put our, our letter into his record, into his file. Um, and again, with a, a formal complaint registered to the presiding judge, um, I think that'll send a very strong message uh, through the courts. Um, and if there's no opposition to that, um, uh, it's something I'd like to uh, suggest that, uh, uh, that I do on behalf of the council. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Sarmiento. I know there's also a, a state commission um, that oversees judicial conduct. So maybe the that- commission? Well, no, that's the appointment committee, but there, there is a judicial conduct um, uh, governing agency that oversees, again, um, judicial uh, uh, and conduct from the bench. So I think if, you're, if we're going to uh, maybe file something with the presiding judge, it should be copied to the commission as well. Point me in the, yeah, let's do that, uh, council member. Please uh, make sure uh, we're saying to the right folks. But um, I think if we do that, that'll send a very strong message to any other judge and commissioner uh, that uh, is engaging in this activity. They don't like to have these type of complaints in their, in their record. And I think this warrants uh, you know, such a complaint. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is Councilmember Penaloza. If I could add to Please. your, to your uh, request. I uh, am yes. supportive of that. And I would also uh, ask that maybe 
uh, you having that relationship with the mayors throughout the county, we reach out to the other 34 cities. And because I've seen the negative response that they've had to this, um, uh, these, this commissioner, maybe having them also address it through a letter similar to ours or add their, their, their signature to a letter uh, so it could be a unified effort that this is countywide and not just Santa Ana because these are... Fine, look, I, I have a call with them. Uh, it's about the pandemic. You know, we're mainly talking about coronavirus, but I have convened all the uh, mayors in the county and at different calls they've been on there. We're, we're speaking once a week. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely communicate this to them. Um, and let's see how many uh, uh, join and, and issue their own letters. I bet you we're going to get a lot of letters. Absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of good cities here in Orange County, and uh, we all care about the county and the future of the county and, and what's going on. And, and the pandemic right now is um, uh, you know, a problem that we have uh, in common, uh, but this, uh, this one as well with sex offenders. So with that, uh, what uh, any other action? Uh, do we vote on anything? What uh, what's the pleasure of the council? Well, Mr. Mayor, if if what you're suggesting is a motion, I would second it, uh, and I want to include uh, Councilmember Penaloza's suggestion as well. Look, just uh, let's go ahead and make it uh, a motion. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Becerra. Roll call vote. Roll okay. call vote. Okay, Mayor, and you're the one who motioned it, is that correct? Yes. Okay, Councilmember Becerra. I second it, yes. Uh, Councilmember Peñalosa. Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento. Yes. Councilmember Solorio. Yes. Mayor Potem Viegas. Yes. Mayor Pulido. That's yes. That's 6 1. Uh, what's our next item, Madam City Clerk? So we still have items 11A and 11B from consent and uh, public hearing item 75A. All right, let, let's just do 11A and B because we were going to wait for original, I believe Councilor Mary Iglesias, uh, maybe it indicated she wanted to participate, but she's not going to be in, so no point in waiting any longer. So let's go on to item uh, 11A and 11B. We just... Yeah, can we just have a motion on both of them? It's just the second, uh, uh, second readings. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, this is Councilmember Penaloza. I'll make a motion to uh, approve item A, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Which would be the. I'll, I'll second the. I'll second the motion for uh, item 11A. All right. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Becerra. Yes. Councilmember Peñalosa. Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento. Yes. Councilmember Solorio. Abstaining again. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Viegas. Yes. And Mayor Pulido. Yes. Uh, same thing. I entertain a motion on item uh, 11B. Motion Mr. Approved. Mayor, Council. Well, hold on, Mr. Mayor, Councilman Becerra. I, I, I have a question of staff before we go forward, and that is. Um, the motion to approve last week for item 11B had two conditions that I added, and I, it just doesn't seem from the resolution clear. I don't think it would jeopardize the readings by having those included because they were part of the record at the last meeting. So if staff wants to clarify that for me as to their inclusion. Um, certainly, sir. If you look on the item and you look on the attachment, those changes that were requested for a number of you at the last meeting are incorporated in the attachment to the staff report. So I'm looking at the staff report. So it's a 38-page so PDF. What page am I going to to go see to them? Go to 11B-21. 11B-21. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so just just for clarification, why are they down this far versus the first ordinance in this packet? Um, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. So, so this 11B-20 has the ordinance, but yet uh, page 11B-1 also has an ordinance um, that doesn't have uh, the same language for, uh, looks like section F, or I'm sorry, subsection F of section 1. 
I, th I think, Council Member, what you're looking at is a red line version versus what was originally submitted so that the public, yeah, there's two versions so that the public and the council members can see that there were two different versions, one red line and one. Okay, and, and in regards to the project labor agreement, so looking at 11B20 and 11B21, um, let's see, at such meeting, I don't see anything in regards to uh, the project labor agreement. I'll ask the planning director to in answer that question. So the project labor agreement and all the conditions that were added um, at the previous meeting, council member, is in the mutual agreement? Okay. And is that mentioned, the mutual agreement, is that mentioned here in the ordinance? Yes. And, and can you point out to which section that's, that would be in the um, amended sub, uh, section G, correct? Um, I'm reading it on 11B-21 of the top paragraph where it talks about the special request and the additional terms are included in a mutual declaration of acknowledgement and acceptance of approved conditions that will need to be signed by the developer and recorded against the property. Okay, and, and those, um, the mutual declaration of acknowledgement and acceptance of approval conditions was, I believe, uh, Mr. Tai, was what we discussed last time as to where to incorporate those conditions, correct? That's correct. That is correct. Oh, okay, Mr. Mayor, I'm okay then moving the item. Second. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Solorio. Roll call vote, please. Before proceeding, I just want to make sure that the council is aware that there was correspondence received on 11B. There were two in opposition and nine in support of the project. Council Member Becerra? Yes. Councilmember Peñalosa? Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento? Yes. Councilmember Solorio? Yes. Mayor Putem Viegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Okay, this is uh, Is our one. next item 75A or what's our next item? Yes, 75A, which is a public hearing item. Okay, this is time and place for a public hearing item 75A. Um, let me just um, ask staff, is there any uh, brief uh, uh, presentation or anything that you would like to add for the record? Um, yes, sir. I'm going to ask our Executive Director of Community Development just to go over the f first few slides explaining what the item before you is all about. But it will be very brief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to start on page 7 of the presentation. A consolidated plan is our five-year plan or strategic plan to use three different funding sources of CDBG money, home money, and ESG money from HUD, and that is for the period of July 1, 2020 through June 30th of 2025. So the consolidated year is a five-year plan. It anticipates re resources of about $8 million a year, adding up to $40 million over the five-year period. It prioritizes needs in the areas of expanding supply of affordable housing, preserving the supply of affordable housing, access to and supply of public services, increasing access to and supply of homeless services, and to promote economic opportunity. The strategic plan goals are matched to the funding, as you'll see in page 10 of the slide and in your staff report. And then the question might come up of what is the 20 20, the 2020 to 2021 annual plan, well, that's required every year. So basically, every year of the five-year period, we come to you with an annual plan, and this is the annual plan for that first year of this five-year period. And with that, I uh, want to thank Judson Brown and his staff for doing this. They did this in-house this year. Instead of hiring a consultant, we're able to get the same input from the public and get this through his commission and did a really good job and saved the city a little bit of money in the process. Good. How much money did we save? Um, about $60,000. Let's add that to the city manager's list of all the money that she's been saving us lately. I think she finds money every week. <laughs> Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers that wish to uh, 
addresses on this item. Yes, Mayor, we do have two speakers who virtually raised their hand. Okay, go ahead. Um, please clearly state your name and support or opposition to the item. You have three minutes and you have been unmuted. Hello. Hello, you may speak now. You have been unmuted. Hello. Hi, you have been unmuted. You have three minutes to speak on item 75A. Okay, uh, necesito un traductor. Mire, uh, oh, okay. hablar. Do we have translation? If not, one of us can do it. We do have Cesar. He's going to take a moment to walk down here and we can proceed with the next person. Si puede esperar un, un, un momento y vamos. Espera un segundito. Ahorita le comimos el traductor. Who's okay. next? Okay. Sí. Who's next, Madam Clerk? Um, hi. Please state your name and if you're in support or in opposition to the item and why. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Luis Sarmiento. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm calling on behalf of Thrive Santa Ana, our local community land trust, whom all of you are, are familiar with. Um, I'm, um, uh, to be honest, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm in favor or opposed to the item, but I would like to ask for the inclusion of community land trust as a useful tool for the city uh, to meet the objectives outlined in this five-year plan um, so that we can build housing, affordable housing, that will be responsive to the local needs, to the local income levels that we've identified are most needed. Um, CLTs are also a way of ensuring permanent affordability um, that will stay with the land. Um, and it's also a smart way of making pub these public investments in a way where that public investment will be retained in the long term. Um, and um, also, you all know that um, the organizations and residents that have formed Thrive Santana have a great track record of ensuring community participation and accountability to local residents, which we feel is essential in this five-year plan. Um, and so I would like that to be included um, in this five-year plan. Um, we know that funds uh, like CDBG, like HUD funds could make a, a big impact um, in, in the way that we do housing in Santana, especially with um, the, the use of surplus land um, and also um, taking advantage of tenant opportunity to purchase you have one policies, minute left. which are being proposed um, at the state level um, and potentially at the, at the federal level. So um, that's my comment. Um, and if, if, um, I don't know, I don't know if the correct, uh, way to proceed would to say, would be to, uh, request for the inclusion of, of, of these, uh, of the, of the community land trust, um, in, as part of the strategies moving forward, um, Otherwise, I, I would say maybe I'm opposed to the item as it stands, um, or if there's a way to include these things moving forward, uh, we'd be happy to work with city staff. Thank you for your comments, uh, Luis. Um, do we have translation yet? Yes, he's here now. Ya puede hablar. Empiece con su comentario, por favor. Hola, sí. Mi mi nombre es mi nombre es Fausto Ramírez. Uh, estoy viviendo aquí en Santana por más de 15 años. Eh, yo estoy pidiendo que nos apoyen a, a que no nos, in, no nos suban o no nos incrementen las rentas en estos momentos tan difíciles que está ahorita todo, porque a veces que no podemos salir, la pandemia, no, los niños en casa, 
Ese el trabajo. tema ya lo, ya lo tratamos anteriormente. Ok, ah, ok. Sí, para que lo queremos para que... Ya, ya, ya. Sí, sí. Queremos... sí eh, que nos eh, sigan apoyando igual como siempre nos han apoyado y tener, que lo tengan en mente ustedes. Pues. Muy bien. Gracias. Eh, ok, no, no, sí, gracias a ustedes. Ok. Okay. Go ahead, Caesar Franco. I think he's talking on the wrong item, but go ahead. Uh, yes, he's talking about uh, this is Soto Ramirez, and I've been a Santa Ana resident for over 15 years, and I ask for your support uh, not to increase the rents. Uh, these are hard times with the pandemics, and our kids are staying at home. So please uh, help, keep helping us uh, in this uh, this situation. Okay. So with that, I'm going to go. I'm we have close one. The public hearing. Mayor, Do we, we have, have other speakers? Yes, we have one more speaker. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Please, please state your name in support or opposition to the item and why. You have three minutes. You have been unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we could hear you. Perfect. Um, so my name is Nathaniel Greensides, and I wanted to mirror some of what Luis Sarmiento offered about um, the community block grants and mirror some of the stuff that he was saying. Um, but also I additionally wish to offer that on this item, had a chance to look at the, the massive document that was prepared for all these funds that are going to be used here in Santa Ana. And I, I think these are ec an excellent way to ensure that there's um, positive development in our city, especially for areas that are needing it. Um, my only request is that uh, the city work into its plan because um, I didn't see anything that, um, Forgive me for not having the time to review the, the whole document. I didn't see anything in the plan that ensured that um, residents um, and any sort of qualifications for who gets to have um, say on how these um, funds are ultimately used in our neighborhoods um, just build into the, the, the plan that there's uh, direct involvement of residents who are being directly impacted by these funds that are um, being used, especially for community block development grants because if given to the correct hands, um, I think it has a really big potential to serve as a beacon here in Santa Ana, as many other places have done all around the nation to ensure that all kinds of community um, development corporations as well as the community land trusts um, are offering control of, of the land and the place on which uh, their buildings reside um, and the fut for future generations for themselves and for their kids. And thank you. All right, uh, any other speakers? We have no other speakers, Mayor. All right, let me close the public hearing uh, and bring it to council for consideration. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Sarmiento. Go ahead. Um, and, and this is more a question for staff, I guess, and I know these documents are more um, goal-oriented they're not really, um, they're more high level and, and, and um, principles, I guess, for us to move forward on. Would there be any disruption to the whole um, scheme of different, um, different um, uh, uh, methods of achieving those goals by including a community land trust reference in there, since we've already done one? Is that something that would be uh, contrary to any of the objectives that are in there? No, it would be getting maybe a little too specific, as you really alluded to. I think they're already included in the process. They certainly could already apply for the, the NOFAs that Judson sends out, his RFPs, Notice of Funding Availability. They certainly are on the list and would be included in that. And they would be included on the area of supplying affordable housing, just like any other developer would. Community Land Trust, I think, is covered already by some broad-based principles. Okay. I, I you know... I just think sometimes things get lost and, you know, maybe if we footnote it or if we do something to reference that there is going to be um, an effort to try to also um, invite um, them to uh, apply. Again, if you, if you to remember, make it... I'm sorry. If you remember last year, we actually adjusted to allow long-term leases in which they were a benefactor of, if you remember, for their property. Right. So I uh, no, I understand that there's nothing to exclude them. I just want to make sure that, you know, in the event that we wanted to include language in there, again, we could get real specific and start including a bunch of others, and then it turns into instead of a, 
six inch document turns into a 12 inch document. Um, but again, I think because there is uh, such, a, such a need for having residents participate in this, this is one vehicle. So just something for us to consider. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I'd entertain, if no more comment, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Salorio second. Thank you. Roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Council Member Becerra. Yes. Council Member Peñalosa. Yes. Council Member Sarmiento. Yes. Council Member Solorio? Yes. Count Mayor Pro Tem Vegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Motion carries. So, Madam one. Clerk, uh, are we on uh, 85A or where are we now? Yes, we are on 85A. And we did not receive any public comments on that item. So, I will defer to Council Members Becerra and Peñalosa, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this item uh, is a subject matter that I would like for us as a city council to address. Uh, there have been instances where members of our council have frankly ducked votes for no stated valid reason. I believe that we have a responsibility to the community to participate in the decisions that are presented to us unless there is an absolute valid reason, a legal reason, or something that truly prevents us from participating in a vote. Uh, to clarify and enshrine our obligation to participate in votes on matters before us, I would like to ask my colleagues to support directing our staff to draft language for policy that requires all city council members present at a meeting to be required to vote for or against the motion unless a council member is disqualified by either a stated conflict of interest or some other valid legal reason. Council Member Peñalosa, additional comment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted to say that I agree with what Council Member Becerra said. Um, we all, you know, took an oath to, to uphold this office and, and carry out the duties that come with it. And uh, by constantly choosing to abstain from votes, and, and I think this just requires a, a bigger conversation because um, it, it's not just about abstaining. You know, we should all be present, you know, just period, to, to take these, these hard votes that keep us up at night. I mean, I have yet to miss out on a vote as a sitting council member. Uh, as we've seen today, you know, I've seen from uh, uh, my colleagues just kind of disappear when there is sensitive issues on the agenda that they don't want to go on the record for. That's just plain and simple. And I think it's important that we all carry out the duty that we were elected to do and really be that voice for our, our constituents, uh, the public, and be present and, and, and take vote unless we're not legally allowed to, uh, especially after the city attorney says that we're legally allowed and okay to take a vote. I mean, there's no reason why people should be abstaining for anything. I mean, if that's the case, then, then uh, if you're going to abstain or, or disappear, I mean, sh you shouldn't be a council member. And that's uh, it's plain and simple. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, but that's where I'm at. So I am supportive of directing the city manager and staff to come back with a policy that could really just lay this out for us. Uh, what can we legally do? What uh, Any possible consequences of abstaining from votes when we're legally okay to vote on? Um, it, it, it's just unfortunate that we even have to discuss this. And that's basically it. Mr. Mayor, if I may add yes, just a go little ahead. bit more. Uh, thank you. I, I, I just want to also be clear, you know, while there was an example of it tonight and there have been at least two others since my uh, joining of the council, I'm not directing this at any one person. And I hope that everybody understands that one thing about me is that, you know, if there's a problem, let's tackle it, let's solve it and let's move on. It, you know, one time it happens, you kind of hope, okay, it doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, it happened multiple times. And, you know, if we need to have um, some sort of ordained rule in place 
then that's unfortunately or fortunately the direction that I think we need to go. So I, I want to thank Councilmember Peloza for uh, supporting this direction as well. And I, again, hope that my colleagues will um, support staff coming back with, uh, to the Council of Policy. Additional yeah. comment, yeah, Council Ms. Members. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, go, go ahead, ahead. Council Member. You went first. Go ahead, okay. Council Member. Um, uh, yeah, this is Sarmiento. Uh, so thank you to uh, uh, Council Members Peñalosa and and, and Becerra for bringing this. So I was. This is more directed to um, our city attorney. So Madam City Attorney, I think um, I don't know if we can bring back policy on well settled California law, which you know talks about conflicts of interest, which creates the necessity for abstentions and recusals. So to the extent that you um, you know reference those um, those laws or those uh, code sections, uh, Sonia. Maybe you can as we talk about this, but I think there are some very clear, um, um, again, state state law references that we can talk about. You know, when we have a conflict, you know, are they conflicts as a result of an economic interest? Um, sometimes you can abstain based upon the perceived conflict of interest. So, you know, there is a lot of, um, you know, unfortunately a lot of literature on this but to the extent um, you incorporate that as background, I think uh, you know if we do take any position that it's consistent with um, you know with with those dictates. Yes, um, Council Member, I would um, absolutely make sure whatever proposal came forward is consistent with state law, and then there may be, as you just mentioned, some further policy decisions for the council to make with respect to when you might want to allow someone to abstain based on a potential. Um, I also see a, a situation where perhaps someone um, discovered a potential conflict and did not have enough time to request an FPPC letter. So we might um, definitely have state exclusions, and then we might want to add a couple for practical exclusions. No, thanks. And uh, those are my comments. I know the mayor and I have, have had to, um, you know, again, abstain, but obviously that abstention uh, requires some explanation. Right, so it can't just be an abstention because you choose not to take a position. I think that abstention or recusal is, you know, has to be uh, well founded on some cause or some reason, and that has to be um, articulated publicly. So I think that's where the um, policy would be helpful and uh, would give us some guidance and direction. Correct, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mayor. This is additional comments. Yes, go ahead. I, I just want to thank Councilmember Sarmiento for bringing that up. Um, and I want to make sure that we, I, I'm very aware of that. And, and yeah, if, if there is a legal reason why you have to abstain, as we've seen council members, or we've seen most of my colleagues do in the past, uh, a lot of the times we do state for the record why we're abstaining from a vote. And that's great. I mean, that's good that we're allowed that uh, if there's any conflict of interest. But in the event that there is no conflict of interest and you just decide to not vote just because, I mean, that is where the, the, the issue is. And, and I wanted to make sure that we were clear on, on the two different uh, reasons. Thank you. M Mr. Mayor, this is Councilmember Solorio. Uh, I, do think my, I do thank my colleagues also for bringing this forward. Uh, I think as part of what, what comes back, definitely we also need to just clarify abstentions versus recusals versus actual legal financial conflicts. Uh, because sometimes folks have recused themselves uh, really for no solid legal reason, but uh, really j just abstaining. Uh, and I'm not saying it's necessarily a problem, if, if anything, too. Uh, uh, just as part of the, this review, if uh, the city attorney's office can look at the uh, attorney general's opinion, which isn't very old, Kamala Harris uh, uh, a few years ago as AG uh, set up, uh, you know, the criteria for abstaining uh, at city councils, uh, as well as the League of Cities and others have uh, have a lot of good writing on that. And what I found interesting in re-reviewing those things again, a key uh, thing with those kinds of things is also who's eligible for quorum purposes, uh, as well as you know, whether somebody can stay in the room or not. So I think all those practical uh, ap applications and issues uh, are important as well. But uh, I, I think it's important that we 
as someone mentioned earlier that we try to anchor anything in, in either state law or in um, or in uh, you know prior opinions and legal case law uh, on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Juan oh, Mayor. Mr. Mr. Mayor Juan Vegas. Go ahead. So a quick comment. Go ahead, Mayor uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one of the things that I want to thank Councilmember Sarmiento for bringing this up on this item. Um, you know his comments. And, you know, I was asking myself, so what would be the threshold for a valid legal reason to abstain? You know, there's a lot of reasons. A lot of times when we recuse ourselves, it's in the abundance of caution. We always say that. And it's very vague. It's a little bit of a gray area. And then again, if we did come up with some kind of policy, but suppose the council member were to abstain anyway, even though, um, you know, our colleagues are saying, no, well, we have a policy and you need to. And he says, no, this, this is my reason. And you're not going to force me. I'm going to continue to um, abstain. So, um, you know, those are some of the things I think about. And uh, I think there is a lot, right? I mean, this, we need to think about this a lot more than just make a decision now. But if the staff wants to look at it and if the, um, the city attorney would like to, you know, render more uh, an opinion and uh, more information to us, I'd be glad to look at it. And, and that's my comment. Thank you for that comment. Additional comment? Just uh, really quick, Mr. Mayor, to add to that. Uh, Go ahead. And, and I think that's the whole intention of this item on the agenda, not necessarily to make a firm decision right now, but just to direct staff, including the city attorney, the city manager, the clerk of the council, and all parties involved to, to look at any area where these policies exist, if they do. Um, and, and bring them back to us, bring them back in a staff report as an agendized I item for further discussion and consideration. Uh, if it becomes a receiving file, then, you know, with just information, then so be it. But just uh, gathering that information, you know, to see what other cities have if they do, I mean, that's the whole point of this, is to bring back additional information so that we could really dig into it and, and have a broader discussion. Uh, but thank you. Those those are my final comments, Mr. Mayor. I just, right. if I may, add one more Go thing, ahead. and that is, um, I, I want to clarify, at least from my intention, that I would like to see something. If, again, you know, if it is a receive and file, because there's nothing realistic that we can adopt as a council, that's okay. But my intention in bringing this forward is to hopefully bring forth an actionable item, something that would enshrine that, unless you have you know, a reason that's, you know, somehow uh, ingrained in state law or other case law or something that really is a, is a valid reason that you cannot participate in a vote. I would like to see us have policy that does as much as possible to require participation, whether we would want to call it abstentions or anything else. I mean, really just to cut down to the bone at the end of the day, it's to get full participation on votes from this council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Look, um, I let's see what staff, uh, what thoughts uh, they have. And I'd suggest before anything be brought forward, let's, you know, give them some time to do some, uh, you know, research, et cetera. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think there's we're going to find that there's a lot of law on this already. Uh, it's something the FTPC goes in a great detail. Um, and ultimately, it's between, you know, council members and the voters and and. Um, you know, that relationship and that, and that trust. Uh, so I don't know that we'll be able to come up with any policy that's going to result in sanctions or fines or, or things of that nature. Um, I think that's why we have the FPPC. But look, I, I think no harm, no foul. I think the intent is clear. Um, let's uh, give staff some time and, and, uh, and let's go from there. So, um, I, I think uh, that's enough for discussion on this item. Uh, I believe we have another item, uh, Madam uh, City uh, Clerk. Yes, 85B, and we did receive um, a total of two correspondents, um, and both of them, okay. yeah, and both um, were just indicating comments on the housing opportunity ordinance. Okay, this is an uh, item brought forward by Councilmember uh, Jose Solario, why don't you go ahead, Councilmember? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and I bring this forward really just to tee it up to, you know, for my colleagues. Uh, I know we have a you know 
obviously, you know, the, the, the Brown Act, and um, I really am taking this opportunity to give an update on behalf of our ad hoc committee uh, on uh, reviewing the Housing Opportunity Ordinance. Uh, to put items on the agenda, you know, you, you, you really, you know, can't be calling everybody, and so I, I'm always concerned about uh, uh, about perception and not violating the, the, the Brown Act, but really, I'm here to talk on the work of the ad hoc committee, and I know uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Villegas is also on the committee in case he wants to add anything, and uh, the other ad hoc committee member is uh, Councilwoman Iglesias. Uh, I wanted to bring this forward because uh, really it was probably almost a year ago, M Mr. Mayor, that uh, you uh, created this ad hoc, and we did a lot of good work uh, last year all the way into December, uh, and after December, you know, we've been just trying to uh, uh, meet up again, but, th but that was proving hard, so I think uh, uh, staff was going to just follow up uh, with uh, the work of the committee, put the recommendations and policies in some kind of written format, and then uh, uh, bring it to the, to the council. Uh, you know, obviously COVID and other things uh, continue to, to, to slow us down, but good progress has been made, and I think, uh, uh, you know, at the end, I'll ask staff to give an update on when something might come back to the full council with review of the committee's work. But the kind of things we were talking about was right now, more, many people don't know it, but uh, the developers that have to pay this uh, or, or do this, this policy is very limited. Uh, and there's an interest in maybe having a few more projects and a few more areas be uh, in included in this, uh, and that would over time and bring in more revenue uh, for the funding that is largely coming from uh, the in lieu uh, program. Uh, and so that is important because there continues to be a need for, for affordable housing. Uh, but we've also have heard, including from some stakeholder meetings that staff did last year, uh, there's you know a, a variety of ideas out there. And I know too from uh, my colleagues, you know, ideas about trying to incentivize more for sale affordable as opposed to just renters because there's a lot of value in creating, uh, uh, you know, folks that can own property rather than, uh, rather than rent all their life. I think that's important. We also talked about uh, uh, further rehabilitation of substandard rental uh, units because it's easier to rehab and make affordable uh, existing uh, uh, housing rather than than building a brand new one. Uh, also, in terms of the eligibility of the in, in lieu fund, uh, you know, sometimes there's interest in a small community center, uh, a little bit more of a open space area, playground for the children, a little bit more parking, and those things uh, should be eligible as well. Uh, I do also think that given uh, where we're at with uh, with uh, you know COVID and not just the, the health consequences, but the economic consequences that uh, us doing something to uh, incentivize uh, this program, reform it. We also heard from some that for certain types of projects, the fees are too high, and so that might be something to be looked at as well and that we did uh, review. Uh, and again, staff is putting all those things t together. Um, I'll just conclude uh, with one question to, to staff, whoever wants to come up, and if my colleagues have uh, items fine. If not, uh, the key question I have for staff is uh, the, the work of the ad hoc and uh, bringing policy ideas and recommendations forward. Uh, when does staff envision um, bringing that back to the council? Because that would be really uh, an excellent time as well for giving feedback. And by then, hopefully in the staff report, there'd be some things in writing to review. Um, council member staff is currently working on uh, doing the calculations and everything that the ad hoc wanted them to research, and we hope to have it back before the full council in the month of June, so maybe about 30 days. Okay. Earlier may be better, but June is fine. I know we're working uh, you know, on the budget in, in, in June and May, but that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, council member. Um, if there are no other comments, uh, let's Mr. move Mayor, on, on the uh, agenda. I have a, a comment. This is Councilmember Penaloza. Go ahead. Uh, my only comment was that if, if we're going to really have this this uh, this discussion, and we should have it uh, 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 in regards to the Housing Opportunity Ordinance and any other uh, factor for that matter, uh, any report, I would hope that it doesn't come to us until we are back in full service, we're open to the public, we we allowed that public input because that's a huge component that we need to take into consideration 
when amending any of these things is public input. And if we're not going to have that, if we're going to allow very minimal comments, just e-comments by 5 p.m., that's not appropriate to do. So I would hope that we have this discussion until we're 100 percent back in service and open to the public. I, I would concur with that, uh, Councilor Peñalosa, that, um, you know, right now we're in a, a you know, a semi-functional mode. We're doing the best we can, but this is, uh, you know, we're under a attack by the COVID virus. Right. Um, and even though, you know, our instinct is just to continue to try to do everything, uh, there's some things that are best done uh, under normal circumstances, let's call them. So I, I would just echo that and tell staff if you guys need more time, uh, it's not that you need more time to do some of the analysis, but it, it, I think we need more time to you know, have a more you know, robust uh, consideration of all these items. So I, I would continue to uh, you know, look towards the city manager to run the city on many levels, making a lot of day-to-day -day decisions, some of which maybe we would normally be a part of. Right now we can't, and we understand that. Um, and, you know, we haven't even spoken about the virus, but, you know, unfortunately our numbers are growing in town. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's a big, uh, you know, big issue that uh, it's the 800-pound gorilla in the room right now. I mean, many of us are not even in the room because of that. So let me just thank Council Member, you know, Solario for bringing this forward. Um, if there are no more other comments, Mr. Mayor, I'd just, like to. Yes, go ahead. Look, just for the record, because I know we're we're um, trying to give some guidance to staff, and that's what these um, 85 items are normally for. I just want to echo what uh, you and Council Member Peñalosa said. I think because we're also kind of operating with a skeletal staff, um, we're mostly performing triage right now, just to make sure that our organization con continues to provide. Uh, baseline, frontline resources and support for our residents. Um, yeah, to the extent that, you know, really large items like this um, are done in the light of day when we have um, uh, public participation that's going to be uh, thorough and robust. I, I just want to echo the sentiment so they uh, hear from one more council member uh, as well on this item. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. just one final thing I'll say. I uh, thank all my colleagues for this. And again, it was just meant to be a, an overall update and, and hear from staff a little bit. Um, I do like the idea of large projects having, you know, real dialogue and debate. And I think in June we also have uh, budget uh, work to do. Uh, and maybe that even starts at the second meeting in May. And I know as the governor is beginning to allow uh, – uh, the state to open up a little bit more and starting this Friday uh, that maybe staff can begin to think about whether we might be able to open up in a, in a broader way as soon as the second meeting in May, uh, but at the very least in June because uh, one of the most important documents there is is a city budget because that speaks to you know our values and our priorities and uh, uh, that is an item as well that I think we should prioritize for good uh, public uh, dialogue including housing and other items thank you all right I, I i would say to that that on that i think we right now need to rely on the public health officer and and let's see what phase we are within meetings uh the last thing we want to do is that to the to the to the problem and um i know the city manager has been working very hard on the budget um and certainly that needs a uh, full Transparency, but I, I think hopefully in the near future they can place that on the on the city web, uh, you know, site and uh, at least what we're thinking and you know continue to, to to get input on that. But we have two more 85 items. I think we have is it 85 uh, C? Yes, that's and then correct. 85 D. That's correct, Mayor. And we did receive one correspondence um, in support of the free internet Wi-Fi. All right, um, that was Councilor Sarmiento, the internet Wi-Fi, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I did want to begin by, by thanking staff and specifically our um, Director of Public Works and our City Manager for uh, allowing me the opportunity to 
uh, talk to some of the service provider uh, and their representatives. So I did have a chance to speak with um, uh, representatives from AT&T, uh, Spectrum Charter, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And I think what um, this COVID uh, pandemic has really demonstrated is that there is a very large divide between those that have access to um, uh, you know, uh, internet and Wi-Fi and all the resources that we, uh, that many of us take for granted and um, those that don't. And especially, you know, because many of our families and, um, and students are, are home now um, and they're trying to distance learn without having this, uh, w this really, really uh, basic necessity, uh, we have this disadvantage and those that have and those that don't have. So, um, you know, we, we had really good conversations, and I know all of them are doing their share. And, um, you know, I spoke with folks from T-Mobile who said they have 100,000 Wi-Fi hotspots, and they have those throughout the state. So uh, we spoke about how we can garner some of those um, here in the city. Um, with Verizon, you know, we, were, you, we uh, recently uh, had some, um, uh, about 170 small cell sites reserved for them. And uh, with AT&T, they were doing very good things with uh, not requiring credit card um, uh, requirements for folks. Uh, for two months of uh, free Wi-Fi, they were charging between 5 and $10 a month, and they're trying to increase their hotspots. So, um, you know, they are all certainly doing good things in addition to Spectrum that just, in, you know, uh, I guess um, expanded their time to uh, provide uh, hotspots. And, one of the concerns I know uh, that had been rumored out there about Spectrum was that they were extending a 60-day period of free Wi-Fi, and some folks were saying it was because they were um, requiring um, those households to uh, contract with them after that 60-day period, and that was a requisite to, to the um, access. And so it was clarified to me by um, their representative that there was a clear opt-out and there wasn't anything binding them. So that was good to hear, and they've now gone beyond their 60 days and um, extended, it, uh, extended it beyond that period of time. You know, in short, in summary, is that, you know, I know that many of my colleagues and I have received um, communications from our friends at the uh, school district and just families in general that um, are in desperate need. And I heard this story, and it was an unfortunate one where you had some children trying to access some school material and distance learning and having to go into somebody's car to do it. And um, that just doesn't seem um, something that we should be proud of. Um, it's not really something that we did intentionally, but it just shows that whether it's because of lack of infrastructure or because we haven't been able to um, sit down in earnest with some of our uh, partners and providers, um, that we uh, do so. So the city manager, um, you know, the only direction I would give is if she could continue having those conversations with the superintendent, I believe, that have been started, and maybe work with um, uh, the superintendent and his staff to, to meet with the uh, representatives from these um, carriers. They all seem like they're willing to help, and I think they all want to do something positive for this. And I was just kind of doing some math, and I know the number of 10,000 households keeps coming up as, as households that don't have access to Wi-Fi. And let's just use AT&T's example. If they, we were to charge, if they were to charge $5 a month, that's, um, you know, look, that's, that's uh, $50,000 for um, those, that 60-day period. Um, or actually, maybe it's, a, it's, it's yeah, it's $50,000. So, you know, amongst agencies, amongst other resources, maybe some of the fund, funding that we received um, could be used towards this effort. I don't know, but I guess it's a matter of just thinking creatively. And so, look, I'm not going to say more. I just wanted to make sure that this topic doesn't get away from us because it really does shine. And unfortunately, this, un this again, this unfortunate uh, uh, divide between, again, those who have and those who don't. And sometimes it's just a function of where you live, the infrastructure isn't there, or maybe just affordability that folks just don't have money at the end of the day to be able to pay for this service and who's suffering are our children. And so that's, uh, that was something I just wanted to present for everybody's consideration tonight. Thank you. Um, let me comment on that briefly, and, and, um, and then let's continue to get other comments. Yeah. Um, I Ms. know that the county recently received $554 million 
um, you know, to spend on COVID related expenses. Uh, you know, to me, this is certainly one of those uh, expenses and maybe ultimately, maybe we can improve things in such fashion that we, when we come out of this, uh, that we address this, uh, uh, you know, divide that exists or lack of access. Uh, I know I was talking to OCTA and saying, well, why couldn't we park uh, potentially buses at certain school sites or neighborhoods and, you know, send out, uh, you know, temporary signals to uh, many of the students around those areas? Because right now, uh, I think we're frankly in educational meltdown mode uh, because some students don't have access. Uh, I think the district is taking the position that they're, you know, just going to try to figure it out, but while they figure it out, it's all frozen. So, you know, talking about, you know, test scores dropping and kids not performing, uh, yet in other parts of the county, I know, you know, maybe the access is better and, and you know, we're not facing, uh, you know, the loss of really what's going to turn out to be an entire school year. So may we take this opportunity to, to, to actually do something what I'd like to request with the concurrence of the councils that the city, ma city manager come back with a plan. Um, let's figure out what a permanent solution looks like um, and then see if we can't find some of this COVID money or one-time money because I don't think the county is going to spend all that money. And if we could you know, address this uh, in some fashion on a permanent basis, that would be the best. Um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, part of what the virus is doing is it's uh, basically exacerbating and making all sorts of weaknesses that already existed, uh, you know, they're being amplified and, 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 and the problems are being uh, grown. Um, and so, again, maybe there's an opportunity to try to figure out, well, what, what can we address? I know other cities are trying to do this. San Jose's uh, working with several providers. They're putting a plan together and they're trying to figure out how to finance it. We can go to Mayor Licardo and, and get more information on that. But um, I, I, I think there are certainly examples we can emulate and try to figure out, you know, maybe is there something short term that we can do, something immediate. Again, we've got a lot of buses at OC Day right now that are not being utilized and I think they're big enough where you could have uh, uh, all the equipment that you needed to be able to transmit signals um, uh, and or, you know, vans. We've got a lot of vehicles at OCPA, uh, but also permanent solutions, uh, you know, uh, you know, larger uh, uh, fixes that uh, that are more permanent in nature. Uh, any other thoughts from council members, please? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilmember Penaloza. Sure. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to, to thank Councilmember Sarmiento, my colleague, for bringing this forward. Uh, I kind of, uh, I'm kicking myself for not adding my name to it. I should have reached out to him sooner. But uh, this is something that's very important and much needed in our community. And I just want to also remind our city manager to not lose, lose sight of this, of this uh, task and work closely with the school district because I think that's what's, that's going to be the key partnership is with the school district and uh, to really get this internet access to those who need it, which is the, the 50 some thousand children. Uh, I'm not saying that all of them don't have access to, but a lot, uh, to internet, but a lot of them do. And uh, about 20%, uh, I'm sorry, say that again, Madam? 20% do not have access. Oh yeah, 20% of the school district enrollment do not have access to internet, which is very unfortunate because even just right now during COVID-19, that is how Everyone is doing instruction. From what I've heard, that's what a lot of school districts, this school districts around the country, are going to uh, be doing. Uh, instruction is through online uh, data databases and platforms. So it's uh, important that we give this access to them. But I also want to remind staff to keep in mind that that of the unintended consequences that this could potentially have. Um, with the l very large uh, transient community that we have in the city and making, and that's why I, I, I want to put emphasis on close uh, partnership with the school district to really focus and zero in on those children that need it. Um, I don't want this to be a case like the, 
like the free cell phones, you know, great idea, unintended consequences, the, the people living in the railroad tracks, setting businesses on fire, have a better phone than I do. And that's, the, that's the, the, what we could potentially see. But uh, this is very important. Um, I'm all on board. Let's use the, the cell phone providers that want to put cell phone antennas on all our light poles. Use them to our advantage. Uh, work out a deal with them, uh, just like my colleague mentioned. Um, see what, what kind of agreement we could come to to provide uh, free or low, very low-cost Internet service to our residents. Um, and that is it. Thank you uh, again, Councilmember Sarmiento, for bringing this forward, and Mayor Pulido for the, the county fund suggestion, which is also important, and uh, su I'm supportive of. Mr. Mayor, quick uh, comment. Thank you for that. Quick yeah, comment. Go ahead. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, go ahead. First off, uh, thank you, Councilmember Sarmiento, for bringing it up. Uh, for the last few years, I've had a couple of meetings trying to, uh, with different uh, department heads and uh, people that are that work in this industry and for some reason we could just never get it off the ground the the, the issue of money always came up and the um, we were trying to do the underground wiring <clears throat> now we got small cells and uh, and it's a great point what council member uh, Peñalosa was just saying that uh, regarding the transient community that's out here and all the phones and using up maybe some of the Wi-Fi if there was some way to come up with a permanent solution where we can target the people that actually really need it and then come up with some kind of plan for them to have it in their home, then that would kind of solve that issue. And I don't know. We're going to have to uh, think about it, but I'm glad this topic's on the table. I remember speaking to the IT executive director not too long ago, and it just, you know, because the school district has been reaching out to all of us, and that issue of money keeps coming up. So I'm glad everyone's on board to try to tackle this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. this Mayor, is Councilmember Solorio. Um, I, I thank uh, uh, Councilmember Samirinto for bringing this forward. And I think, uh, you know, we've all been uh, active, uh, you know, promoting the Wi-Fi opportunities that are for our, our community. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, Councilmember Villegas and I, I think about three years ago, we had uh, – one or two joint use meetings with the school district, and I raise this issue because it's an issue that I care a lot about, and they're all, oh, we got it covered. We have Wi-Fi at RL schools and throughout the city, and no problems. We don't need your help. And we're all, okay, you know, because at the time, as Councilman Rodriguez was saying, we're looking at a smart plan where we might do fiber the way cities like Santa Monica and others have, and the idea there is as you're rebuilding streets to put in uh, your own fiber so you can have uh, your own network. That might be something that we ask uh, our public works team to l look again. Similarly, as we were buying the light poles from Edison, uh, the – the infrastructure that we had with light poles was, was, was that so that there'd be the capacity to add Wi-Fi uh, from those light poles that we own. And so maybe staff can also give us an update on what that means and what that would cost. Um, and I also know that the city's Wi-Fi mobile hotspots uh, have been going well and are all used, and I know we've been increasing it, and uh, this was another example of uh, why we need to keep uh, d doing more of it. Uh, I'll close with, uh, with the idea of, I think because right now we're seeing that it's children uh, and students that are mainly uh, currently, currently struggling with the situation, that we still do have the, uh, the youth fund from the cannabis dollars where there's some resources there that maybe staff can look at that as a possible uh, uh, area to, to to finance and fund some of these things uh, because there's probably you know four to five million dollars over there and I know the uh, that the youth commission's been working on on recommendations for us uh, and so maybe we could work with our youth commission and staff on on some possible solutions uh, out of that uh, with that uh, yeah let's keep uh, pushing the service providers and others for more resources so that more of us can be connected. Thank you. Thank Mr. Mayor. You. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Council Member Sarmiento for bringing this forward. And I think all my colleagues had some very insightful uh, comments regarding this. I think that as a the capital city of Orange County in the 21st century, we should definitely uh, do our best to tackle this issue. Um, as we talk about 
infrastructure and you know how to do the physical construct of a network like this i would also like to ask our staff to also consider ways to partner with our existing providers to uh, get service to the folks that most likely cannot afford this because i think what we have been hearing is that there are folks that you know there, there's a special discount or a deal but then there might be a bigger commitment now i know that uh, my colleagues have talked to some of the providers to you know get past that issue but i think that there might be a way that our staff maybe it's something that again through a partnership maybe similar to how we handle uh, trash services or other services where we have providers come in and we're able to work out uh, some sort of arrangement with them to provide it at a certain level for our residents. And hopefully we can be pioneers in that arena, but whether it's uh, physical infrastructure or whether it ends up being some sort of um, arrangement that we can work through with the uh, providers. Either way, I appreciate this idea and goal being brought forward to us. So again, thank you. All right. So with that, why don't we go on to the next item? Um, that's, I believe, uh, go ahead. That's 85D, and we did not receive any correspondence on this item. All right. Uh, is there any opposition to that? I think that's a digital messaging um, coming out from the city to all, you know, graduates uh, throughout our city. Is that pretty much it? Um, Mayor, this is Christine. Um, I'm pretty clear on what she wants, so if there isn't any opposition, I'm prepared to move forward. It's just basically congratulating all of the, the uh, graduates, the 2020 graduates in our community via the digital boards that we have access to. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, this is uh, Councilmember yeah. Penaloza. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I think it's a great idea. Um, but I wanted to ask the city manager if this would be the appropriate time for, for you to talk about any discussions uh, or possibilities you've had with the school district in other ways where the city could recognize the graduating class of 2020 um, or if you could want to save them for your manager comments that's that's fine Oh, just two quick comments. Thank you for asking the question. Um, the superintendent did ask if we could light up the water tower in white and red for this, uh, the city district school um, school colors. And then the other thing is they are doing a banner program. I don't know if you're aware of it, but the Santa Ana Unified School District, they're selling banners to congratulate the graduates. And they'd like to see them placed around town just to help the kids celebrate this, this great occasion. And we are looking into acquiring those as well. Perfect. And... Um, I want to make sure that we, we, we clarify, and I'm not sure if you already did, but that it's ye not yellow and red, or is it white and red? Because Initially I heard red and white, but then someone did say yellow and red. Okay, because the school district's colors are uh, yellow and red, or gold and red. Um, so I just want to make sure we don't, you know, because I've been told by our, our wonderful water department the, the task it is to climb up there. So I want to make sure that we get the colors right. So let's uh, make sure we're communicating with the school district and just double checking on that, on that color uh, coordination. I actually heard red, white, yellow, and black. So. Oh, okay. But I will confirm. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, this is Councilmember Solorio. Uh, I really, I really like and, and, and I really like and support this idea. I think uh, the more ways that we can uh, collaborate with our school districts, uh, th the better. Um, and additionally, I know we have our own uh, cable channel that maybe we can um, display information there on the on the graduates. Uh, also, we, we do have about six thousand students that attend. Uh, schools in the Garden Grove Unified School District and Orange Unified, a few in Tustin. So to the extent that uh, every now and then we can include uh, their colors and logos and students as well, uh, that's important as well because uh, you know they are a big, uh, big chunk also of our student population. That is an excellent Thank point. You. Thank you, Councilmember Solor. I, I, what I want to add, if I may, was along those lines. We also have a lot of students here in our city uh, that go to charter schools and private schools. Uh, they're a very significant population. I think we are happy for all graduates. Uh, so to the extent, you know, whether it's SOCIA or Modern Day or the Samueli Academy or uh, Edna Vate or, you know, some of the, uh, uh, you know, other schools, the Calvary Chapel schools, 
it's amazing the number of high schools and schools in general that we have uh, here in town. I also know we have Tustin Unified in portions of the city. You know, some of our kids go over to Orange Unified. Uh, you know, there's a few areas that are even in, uh, in, in Irvine. Just let's figure out how we can, you know, uh, tell them that they're all winners, that we're proud of them all, that we wish them the very, very, very best. And, and try to do whatever we can to, to overcome this pandemic and the fact that a lot of their celebrations and parties and ceremonies are all being really taken away from them. Um, and uh, again, I think the more the merrier. Let's, let's uh, task the city uh, manager and, and the rest of the city staff to keep coming up with, with ideas on how we can uh, tell all our graduates how much we appreciate uh, uh, all their hard work and their accomplishments. And so with that, uh, Mr. Where, Mayor, where are we? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, and, and can I add Go something ahead. to that really quick, just since we're on the topic and, and the subject, just wanted to, to also say that uh, I saw on social media today that former President uh, Barack Obama is also doing a, a graduate together uh, commencement ceremony for all 2020 class uh, across the country. Uh, so just wanted to uh, make the public aware to look out for that. Uh, be a nice commencement speech by the former president for to, to include everybody graduating this year. Um, and it's graduatetogether2020.com. So just for, Thank you for, for information. Thank you. Thank you. Now let me turn our attention, if I may. Uh, I believe we're on the housing authority. That's correct. So I'm now going to I'm going to call the housing authority to order. Um, uh, roll call, uh, please. Authority member Becerra. Here. Authority member Peñalosa. Here. Authority member Sarmiento. Here. Authority member Solorio. Here. Vice Chair Viegas. Here. Chair Pulido. Here. A question, are we going to do an excused absence for Councilmember Iglesias, and if so, should we also include the Housing Authority? Yes, you may do that at this time for Housing Authority. And, uh, and I think if we're going to do it, we should be fair and do the Council as well. In general, that's been our practice. Yes. So, um, I would you know, request that, and I would now entertain a motion on items uh, one, two, uh, and three for the housing authority. Make, would I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. Viegas. Roll call vote, please. Authority member Becerra? Yes. Authority member Peñalosa? Yes. Authority member Sarmiento? Yes. Authority member Solorio? Vice Chair Viegas? Yes. Chair Pulido? Yes. Motion carries. I believe we now adjourn that. We go back um, to public comments uh, on items not on the agenda. Do we have speakers, Madam Clerk? Yes, we do. And we also received one correspondence from George Collins regarding fireworks he requests that um, there be a suspension of sale of fireworks until 2021 and for the two virtual um, individuals who would like to speak if you could please state your name and topic and state your issue you have three minutes you have been you have to unmute them yes hi my name is Erica Gonzalez I'm a Santana resident um, small business owner and a, an organizer. I am commenting in regard to the item 85B. Um, since we are bringing up in lieu fees, um, I wanted to bring up a PRA that was submitted to Councilman Solorio back in 2018. Um, we, it was submitted in request to get transparency and to get more information regarding these in lieu fees. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and outline some of those points so maybe we can get those answers tonight. Uh, we will be submitting, resubmitting this PRA so that we can get these answers in writing as well. Because um, if we're going to be re, 
uh, revising the whole ad hoc and the in lieu fees and everything, then we want to make sure that there's going to be real transparency and real community input when it comes to these in lieu fees. Um, so according to the PRA that we submitted, we want to get all documents that uh, in regards to meeting agendas, meeting notes, um, anything relating to how many affordable housing units the city of Santa Ana currently has and is also planning to have. Uh, we want to get uh, notes regarding the requirements and maximum co occupancy for affordable housing units in Santa Ana. We want to know how many how decisions are made to set the income requirements for affordable housing units and who is making these decisions. Uh, we want to know, uh, we want to get information regarding or relating to the management of the in lieu fees that have been paid, the type of account, who oversees it, what is the total amount in the, of the in lieu fees that the city currently has. Uh, we want information relating to who makes decisions on how in lieu fees are utilized and future protections that will ensure all these, all fees are used for future affordable housing. And we want to know uh, what developers or information regarding developers, investors, bankers, consultants who have agreed to pay in lieu fees, how much they have paid and how much is still owed. I don't know if this is in regards to the, I don't know, $35 million that Mike Tara has to pay the in lieu fees uh, for that 37 story building you recently um, approved last, uh, last meeting. So I don't know if he's trying to get out of those fees. I don't know what you're trying to do here. You're obviously not for the people because you voted Solorio against the rent freeze. Don't think we didn't hear that. Thank you for the yeah, other council minute. members who pointed it out. So um, we know where you stand. You're going to be running for mayor. We're paying attention. Don't think that we're not. We're paying attention. We're taking receipts. And we're going to force you to be transparent because we want to know what is happening with, with this money. Where are these fees going? Who's profiting? What community um, interests are being left. satisfied? So like I said, we're going to be resubmitting this PRA. We need answers. And I'd like to have some of those answers tonight. And I'm sure my, my fellow residents would also like to have some of those answers. Have a good night. Okay, next speaker. Please clearly state your name and topic. You have been unmuted. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Lisa Gonzalez Solomon. Um, as you know, I'm the principal of Madison Elementary School, but I'm also a resident here in Santa Ana for over 20 years. I want to thank the city council for supporting our district, for supporting our schools, and for supporting um, getting citywide Wi-Fi in our um, throughout our community. I'm here speaking not just on behalf of the kids at my school, I'm speaking on behalf of residents, residents who do need the Wi-Fi, who do need the access. We have so many of our kids that have returned back from college and have to work remotely, and we want to continue their education. We want to continue supporting them. We also have a lot of people who are working remotely who also need that support of the Wi-Fi. As you know, our district has been working very hard. We've distributed um, over 40,000 Chromebooks to our students. We've ordered another 10,000. Um, we've also distributed um, hotspots to our students. We've ordered another 4,400 hotspots. We've given 800,000 meals to our children. And I do believe that if we want this to work and we do get citywide Wi-Fi, it's going to be something that we all have to come together. We have to bring um, property owners in. We have to bring bus companies in. We have to bring all the providers who do make money off of our community um, and we have to bring everybody in and say this is a problem that we need to solve together. It's not a time to point fingers or say it's the city's problem or it's the district's problem. It's a time that we come together and we solve this together with the county, with the state. We work with everyone we can to try to provide citywide Wi-Fi so we can continue to educate the children of Santa Ana. I do um, want to speak from the heart when I tell you thank you. All of those of you who have supported um, our community and our families, whether you've been out handing out food or handing out hand sanitizer or just making decisions that will really affect our children and our future. Not just the future of the children, but the future of our community and the future we of We have one minute family. left. Um, now is the time that we will come together as for our people. Our world is changing and it would be amazing to see our great city leading the way. Um, we know you already look out for your citizens and their safety. Um, but this would be one more way we can continue to open lines of communication, provide access to education, to work, to health care, and to much-needed resources and information. You will truly be our heroes if you can make this happen, to have this be the first city to announce the steps that they've taken to ensure our community has access, access to education, access to resources, and also access to information. 
Um, we do want our kids to continue to graduate. We continue to support them. Our staff and our district has been working night and day um, to make sure that our kids keep learning. And I just wanted to say thank you for all of you that supported the citywide Wi-Fi. Thank you for those of you that look out for our families and the rent that they have to pay. We're very, very grateful. Thank you for your heartfelt comments. Uh, I, I know I speak for the council when we say we appreciate all the hard work that you're doing. Um, with that, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have any other comments? Yes. Uh, please clearly state your name and topic. You have three minutes and you have been unmuted. My name is Jocelinda and I'm a resident in Ward 2. Um, thank you for affirming the rent freeze on agenda item 60A, but I'm calling you out to extend it to match the eviction moratorium. Um, many of my own family members, friends, and colleagues, and residents over on Santana are renters and severely rent, rent burdened. Many are undocumented undocument, and don't qualify for COVID-19 relief benefits, and many have lost their jobs or have experienced a reduction of work hours, leaving them unable to pay rent. It would be nearly impossible for folks to deal with rent increases, while they are still struggling to pay back the debt they have incurred. This is particularly true for people that will continue to have no jobs after this pandemic is over. Keeping and extending the rent freeze would ensure in lessening the negative impacts of COVID-19 by alleviating financial insecurity, preventing housing displacement, and lowering the risk of the COVID-19 spread. With the acknowledgement of the municipal powers you carry and the present needs of the community, you have the power to minimize housing displacement and the risk of being houseless for Santana residents. And I trust that you will make the only decision that is just for our community here in Santana, which is not only keeping a rent breach during the COVID-19 emergency declarations, but also extending it for at least six months thereafter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Other comments, Madam Clerk? Yes. Please clearly state your name and topic. You have three minutes. You have not been unmuted. Hi there. Hi there. Um, my name is Nathaniel Greenside. I spoke um, a little bit earlier and I wanted to clarify about the um, community block grants and how city council do better to ensure that the folks who aren't developers understand how they can participate in the community block development grants. Um, so to that regard, I wanted to ask that you all do some due diligence and figure out what can be done at that at the city level to ensure that there's um, community understanding of how community block development grants works, et cetera. And then I want to speak also additionally on the rent freeze, uh, a little bit more aggressively on the rent, rent freeze. Thank you for affirming the rent freeze that was enacted. Many of the folks who um, we have spoken to as a part of Tenants United, Tenant Anna, which is a group I am a part of, is that they have asked for an extension. And the reason being that once the orders are lifted, uh, they, they currently don't have the ability to work. And so once the orders are lifted to have a, a, a landlord serve them with a, a rent increase is going to put them further behind when they're already trying to catch up. And then, and then on top of that, the way also that you all can do that is that you have the powers to do so. Sorry, I'm stuck here. And the way the agenda is that at the, at the, on the agenda is an issue because then it, it shows that the, the, whoever wanted to put it onto the agenda isn't having the gall to um, put their name on it and they wanted to ensure that it wasn't brought up on their own name, whichever council member was pushing it. And so I just wanted to bring up the fact that it wasn't made clear that it was the city council member who may or may not have been pushing it and instead we're trying to employ um, via the city manager. I just don't believe that that's fair. And so, and um, what I'm asking also is that you all ens ensure that you use the power that you are granted under state charter during states of emergency and in the interest of the public health and safety that you extend the rent freeze. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Madam Clerk? Yes, we do. Um, please clearly state your name and topic. You have three minutes. You have been unmuted. Hi, my name is Kaylee, and I'm speaking on the rent freeze. I'm a tenant counselor here in Santana and um, a resident as well. And I would just like to speak in favor of extending the rent freeze um, to match the repayment period of the moratorium. Uh, right now, I've been hearing, unfortunately, that a lot of landlords are not accepting 
um, their letters proving that they would qualify for rent repayment. And I believe that um, one of the best things that we can do for renters right now would be to ensure that they're not having to pay rent increases um, during this time of recovery. Um, the city council has the power to alleviate massive future debt for its constituents by taking this bold action in the midst of a global health and economic emergency. Um, so I just urge you to understand um, the kind of uh, impacts that tenants are having across the city right now um, based on my experience uh, speaking to them on a daily basis. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Other comments, Madam Clerk? Yes, we have one last one. Um, if you could please clearly state your name and topic. You have three minutes. You Hello, my name is Maria Saha and I'm talking on the rent freeze. I am also a Santa Ana native and a Santa Ana tenant counselor here for Tenants United Santa Ana. And I am here to support of extending the rent freeze to, remat to match the repayment period of the eviction moratorium. I don't find it just that a a tenant could potentially face a rent increase while they're paying back the debt they accumulated in the process or in the, during the COVID-19 pandemic. I have heard stories of like landlords harassing and forcing tenants to pay the repayment plan they constructed without even letting them know of their protections under the eviction moratorium. So I, and they're not even aware of the rent freeze that's already in place. So I really urge you to protect tenants, put them first because they need it we, you can. This is a public health crisis, and it's very unfortunate that we have to even ask for this. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I really, I, I, I ask that you consider this. I ask that you take this into account because there are many tenants out there that are suffering, and they deserve to be taken into account and heard. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um uh, Madam Clerk, uh, you, we have one more, or are we done? Um, we actually did have another one raise their hand. Um, if you could please clearly state your name and topic. You have three minutes. You have been unmuted. Hi, my name is Fred. I would like to speak regarding the rent freeze. So the pandemic has put the housing stability and the health of tenants in Santa Ana at risk. And right now, unemployment is... Okay. A lot of citizens in Santa Ana are unable to make up the income that they are losing, and so they will be unable to back pay their rent after the 31st of next month. So I think that we need to extend the rent freeze to match with the eviction moratorium. <clears throat> and I think that if we don't do that, we are at risk of exasperating the current health crisis as well as exasperating the housing crisis which exists in Santa Ana. Thank you. Thank you. Was that the last speaker, Madam Clerk? Yes, that was. Okay, I believe now do we go to is it city manager comments? Yes, yes, yes. that's correct. Uh, Mayor, just a few items tonight. I want to comment that um, staff has been working diligently behind the scenes. Um, kudos to our finance department. We are going to be coming before you at the very next council meeting. That's on later this month to go over the first, let you see a first look at our proposed budget for your consideration. And not only the budget, but also a brand new strategic plan that we've been working on as well. And then to let you know, as the governor announced today, that uh, the state could be progressing towards stage two, which would entail reopening of other low-risk businesses. We are putting a plan in place and evaluating how we can slowly bring back city services but still protect the health and welfare of our employees and the public, given that there still is a pandemic out there. And the final thing, I think we have a picture for you on the screen, but after quite a long year and frust frustration among many residents, um, under the Broadway and I-5 freeway bridge, there's been a significant trespassing issue, which has 
We have spent a lot of time, a lot of um, cleanup in the area, a lot of police officers' time, but I am happy to report there is finally a completion of an installation of a fence that completely blocks that area off, and this was a result of a lot of hard work in the Public Works Department, and we had to work closely with the state because it is Caltrans property. We are responsible for maintaining the fence, but we did use all of our monies that we had for National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System compliance, as the littering problem that was taking place under there was creating stormwater pollution issue. So that is up, and you have lots of happy residents in that area of town. And that's all, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, council member comments. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start um, uh, with council member Solario. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just two things. Uh, first, I do want to thank our uh, city managers and public works director and parks director and um, uh, community development, everybody that was involved with uh, uh, fencing off what's been called in that community the, the tunnel to nowhere that was many months and, and years in the making, so I'm very, very, very thankful. Um, second, obviously, we continue to be in this uh, COVID situation, and the governor slowly is allowing uh, counties and cities to open up. Uh, I know based off of uh, Councilmember Becerra's uh, suggestion in our first executive order, we mentioned that we as a city council would decide kind of when we uh, reopen up, and so I think at some point we might want to be a staff, figure out um, what that looks like and when we might need to vote on something or I'd be perfectly fine with just having our city manager uh, lead, uh, you know, what what things we begin to open up that we previously closed off before. Uh, secondly, even though we're starting to open up, I know we're getting uh, increasingly more emails and calls about businesses uh, that our residents think shouldn't be open. Uh, and maybe we, via our social media and other channels, we can inform the public about our views on that or where to make reports, because I do know that there have been uh, some reports and some code enforcement, but I know that you know, we're really more about compliance rather than uh, finding folks. So uh, uh, if, if staff can, can work on those things, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Peñalosa, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just wanted to um, thank city staff and the city manager again and the chief of police, the police department, everyone for really just holding it together throughout this whole pandemic crisis and, and keeping the city still operating and uh, all essential services still uh, in full force. Um, I'm very thankful for your leadership and uh, just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, with that said, um, of course, I need to remind everybody, I want to remind you about uh, the 2020 census. If you haven't already done so, please, I urge you to visit www.my2020census.gov uh, to fill out the census. It, it, there's been an extension uh, by the federal government for the census, but I mean, don't wait. It takes less than 10 minutes. If you haven't done so already and you're listening, please fill it out. And uh, just one last thing, wanted to wish a very happy Mother's Day to, to all the, mo the mothers out there in our city uh, and, part and, in our, and here at City Hall, our staff, anyone who's a mom, happy Mother's Day. Um, we, we got lucky this year, uh, Latin Mother's Day falls on the same day, uh, which is May 10th. And um, so if people are like my mom that like to be celebrated twice, which, hey, I, she deserves all the celebration. You know, she's my mother and love her dearly. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And though, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, Council Member Becerra, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I too, want to thank our staff for all the work that they are doing uh, during this unprecedented time. I really appreciate it, your leadership and just your, your steady hand. Uh, here in the ship again it's very appreciated uh one a couple of items i want to bring up one is uh down on the south end of town uh we are seeing quite a bit of street racing and you know i was out one night walking my dog and i can it, it just sounded very intense you know cars going down macarthur going down bear and it reminded me of what our uh police you know recently had uh 
put out a release in regards to um, a person who had actually been arrested after a two-year investigation. Uh, this person was responsible for a crash on, on Bear between Alton and Sagerstrom. And this person was uh, given a reduced bail after he was charged with two counts of vehicular manslaughter. And I want to, real quick, if the chief is still around, I'd like to ask Chief Valentin, trying to maybe put one and one together. I hope I'm wrong when I ask this, but uh, it says that a, a superior court commissioner reduced the bail for this person responsible for the uh, two counts of vehicular manslaughter. Is it the same commissioner that we spoke about earlier this evening? Unfortunately, it is, sir. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, I think you have another thing to hopefully bring up to uh, the judge when you have a, a chat with him. But, uh, Chief, I would just like to bring to your attention the, the increase in um, street racing. Not only have I been hearing it, but I've also received calls from other uh, residents regarding it. So, if, you know, maybe I know you guys are stretched very thin, but if there's any way to put a couple more uh, personnel down some of these streets, because I think they're very attractive to folks now that you have everybody or at least most people complying with the stay at home orders. Uh, the streets are very attractive for racing. And uh, as we've seen with that uh, accident on bear, it, it could be very dangerous. So I appreciate any help you can provide with that. Um, other than that, I would just like to say um, while you're staying at home, as uh, council member pillows already said, if you could please complete the census, it takes 10 minutes to have an impact on our city for the next 10 years. With that, uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, and I uh, uh, will add that with my to my letter and discussion with the courts. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I believe next is it Councilman Sarmiento. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to begin by uh, saying happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. I mean, we all kind of forget these days are blending into each other and hours are blending into each other. Um, it's nice to know it's only 835, so that's a good thing. Um, but I did want to thank everybody who um, – who commented, sent the, their comments through YouTube, uh, thank our staff for all the hard work that they've been doing. But um, I also want to thank our residents, who this must be really, really difficult on. And I think that, um, you know, I see people biking a lot more, walking a lot more. But more than anything, they are respecting these really difficult conditions that they're living in. So, um, you know, uh, you know, big props to them because it isn't uh, it isn't a fun thing, and unfortunately, we see rates of depression and anxiety um, really um, spiking during these times, and and it's unfortunate. And Mr. Mayor, I wanted to take the chant the time to thank you for your work with the other mayors, and um, one of the things that I think um, you really have a a, a compelling argument to make is that you represent a city in this county unlike the 33 other cities that has a very, very uh, large community of color which has been uh, demonstrated to have even more uh, vulnerabilities to this uh, virus. And, you know, as you know, many of our folks here suffer from hypertension, obesity, um, uh, and, and other pre-existing conditions because of just the um, uh, you know their their own health problems that they've had as a result of living um, in in an area where uh, they're challenged with um, you know lack of health care. So I think your arguments that you make I think are going to really help a lot of folks that unlike many of our friends in in other parts of uh, especially South County, you know we we really don't have we really have a lot of residents that don't have a safety net don't have reserves, don't have savings. So to that point, I know testing has been something that's been really important to you. I see you uh, uh, leading that charge. Uh, again, I think to the extent you can tie the testing to places that are very vulnerable, like our city, it would make a very compelling argument. And um, you know, as we transition and maybe into phase two of the governor's um, uh, phased uh, reopening, uh, I was going to uh, mention to the city manager that I think all of us have an interest in how we reopen because it's going to be slow, it's going to be incremental. But um, you know, you as a chair of the EOC, uh, Madam City Manager of the Emergency Operations Center, if you need or if you think maybe speak with the mayor and the rest of us of putting together an ad hoc, maybe we could uh, provide some recommendations of how we open up. 
because um, really I'm torn. I think I want to you know keep folks safe and at home, but at the same time, you know, again, people uh, have a desperate need to work because they don't have any other source of income. Many of our residents aren't eligible for uh, federal stimulus dollars, and to the extent we can safely put them in a position where they can uh, get back to work and in, do this in a responsible manner, our community is very unique. So I would just say, you know, lean on us. I think we put together ad hocs for other reasons. I can't think of, a, of one more important than this one. So I know my colleagues have stepped up in so many other ways. I know we'd step up in this way. And uh, just let us know. And Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, I'll put that out there for you. But I, you know, I'll make myself available. But you have plenty of us, I'm sure, that would be willing to serve. And with that, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day. Feliz Día de las Madres a todas las madres allá, especialmente a la mía, que estoy bendecido por tenerla todavía en mi vida. Y todos los días yo doy gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thanks for your kind comments, Councilmember. I'll address them in a moment. Uh, but first, Mayor Pro Tem, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I want to start off by thanking everyone who reached out to me uh, in regards to my uh, father passing uh, about 10 days ago. I, I received a lot of phone calls, emails, text messages, Facebook comments, cards, flowers, and even emails from the public to my city account. And here on the dais waiting for me, there's four cards from constituents here in the city. And I just want to thank you all for um, reaching out to me and supporting my family and I during this uh, difficult time. And, uh, you know, the work continues. And even though we are going through this pandemic, for the last couple of weeks, I've been on the phone working behind the scenes, calling Washington, D.C. to get support for our applicants uh, here um, in the city, the ones that are applying for the SBA small business loans. And um, we made some progress, and we're still working on it because I'm trying to get uh, something going. Uh, and it's just a little difficult. There's so many people asking. But uh, I even made phone calls to the White House to get support. And uh, they were well, well received, and it's nice to see that um, they're uh, supporting us in our ask at the SBA because the small businesses here in Santa Ana really could use the help. There's some folks here who uh, could use some, some help. They're not um, uh, up to speed on technology, and uh, I'm glad to see that the city staff has been stepping up to help them to work with the SBA, and, um, you know, I'm just trying to do everything we can to, to help everyone. And so uh, thank you again to the staff and uh, to the public for uh, reaching out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, let me just um, uh, say the following. That is that um, I have been working probably harder than I've worked on virtually anything in my life on this, on this virus. And we're having a lot of things going on behind the scenes um, over the weekend for example when I saw you know the beaches being closed um, and for good reason there was too much crowding etc cetera, etc cetera. but I know that many of those residents are inland residents they're 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 from Santa Ana they're from Anaheim they're from all over the county and beyond and so I thought it was important to try to reach out to the uh, mayors um, along the beaches and try to help them out. So I called Mayor Faulkner from San Diego and he sent me his plan, the plan that they have in San Diego. And of course, you know, those beaches were not closed. And I made those plans available to mayors along the coast here in Orange County. And I suggested to them, instead of going to court uh, and fighting, I mean, sometimes you have to go to court and fight. You have no alternative. But other times you can solve things. And I don't know if you've noticed, but now we've got Huntington, Dana Point, you know, Laguna, and soon others. Uh, they're opening up, and they're opening up in sensible ways, and I think that becomes important because we have to give people uh, hope. We have to give them hope and, 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 and ways of dealing with a pandemic. But, but I tell you that I believe that we are under uh, grave danger uh, largely because I don't believe that the county's been, uh, you know, testing aggressively. 
Um, and if you look at countries around the world, those that are doing best are those that took it very seriously very early. Um, and, and, and we have in the sense that we've asked everybody to stay at home and residents have been absolutely, you know, very, very, very compliant. Um, but it's not enough. We, we don't know where the virus is. We're not doing real contact tracing. We're not even doing significant testing. Um, you know, today, countywide, we had about 2,000 tests, which is up from the 80 that we were doing a few weeks ago. And I've been, um, you know, really trying to alert everybody I could. I finally got a chance to speak to the governor, and governor couldn't believe it that in a county of 3 million plus people, we we're testing 80 people a day. And we've been doing that for a long time. Today, I think we're finally approaching, um, you know, 40,000 tests countywide since the inception of the virus. But imagine 40,000 tests in a county of 3 million. It's very, very, very little. We're not, we're barely over 1%. Um, and so I want us to, consider taking action because I, even though we're going to begin to open up and it's important to do so. And by the way, in opening up, I want to share with the council something I'm sharing with mayors across the region. That is that Mayor Garcetti, um, you know, looked at uh, 50 different cities around the world and how they've come up with plans on opening up. And by the way, like it or not, we're all in this together, meaning Orange County can't break off from L.A. County and just say, well, we're going to do our own thing and we don't care at all about L.A. Our, our, our people work. They travel. They live in different cities. Um, we have a, a lady here in Santa Ana that has a catering truck. She gets up in the morning. She goes from Santa Ana to San Juan, to Mission Viejo, to San Clemente. Then she goes to Downey, to Whittier, and then she comes back to Santa Ana. That's one lady in a catering truck. We have to help that lady make sure that she's safe, that she's not infecting others, and that she's able to keep her job. Um, so anyways, what, where I'm getting at and what I'm getting to is I want to, I've asked the city manager and city attorney to look at the possibility of having our own health officer. Uh, it turns out Long Beach has their own health officer, Pasadena does. There's a few other cities around that do. And we ought to give it some thought because this might not be not only not the last pandemic, we might not be out of it for longer than we would care to admit. And I think as we come out of it, we need, uh, you know, folks that are working uh, really on our behalf and with, uh, you know, some focus to, to our, our individual city. And by the way, this uh, feeling is felt by many other cities throughout Orange County. Um, it turns out that there's some monies associated with that, so it's not something we'd have to fund from, from zero necessarily. Um, and uh, I really think we ought to give it some serious consideration, i.e. having in-house our own, you know, health officer that would be able to give us uh, suggestions, information, analysis, you know, deploy resources, et cetera. The other thing I think we ought to consider um, is uh, really studying this reimbursement model. Part of what LA is doing, and the reason they're able to test so much, they're actually getting reimbursed, you know, by FEMA. It's not an easy road, but right now, all we know is that we have 400 some cases here in the city. Um, we don't know how well they're being tracked. We don't have any idea overall how much has been tested. Um, many of our businesses, our residents want to be tested. There is no mechanism to do so. Um, in the early days, you know, most of the testing that went in the county was, you know, done in South County at LabCorp and, and Quest Labs, and they were, you know, charging over $1,000 per test. A lot of people can't afford a thousand dollars a test. They shouldn't have to. Now, thank God, the prices have come way down. But there's other cities like Irvine that are trying to test every resident in um, in their community. Uh, you know, the mayor of Carson, uh, he's found a nonprofit that's that, that's agreed to test about a thousand people a day in Carson. 
they have a population just under a hundred thousand in about a hundred, you know, in 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 a in a matter of uh, not too uh, many days, less than a hundred days, they're going to have every single person uh, in in Carson either tested or if they don't want to be tested and. And, 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 and they avoid it, they avoid it, but at least it'll be available to that community. Um, we are very dense. Remember, we're the fourth densest city in the country. So, you know, we are a tumbleweed. If it really starts to catch fire, we could really catch fire more than other cities um, around us. We're not there yet, but, but, you know, we don't have it under control yet either. Um, and so, I think in the days to come, um, I, I'm going to ask city manager and the city attorney who have been working on this to, you know, share this with with not only the council but uh, you know the community. But first, you know, we need to study it. We need to give it thought. We need to understand what it means um, and how it'll help us. I believe come out of the pandemic in stages that make sense um, in a coordinated fashion. We, you know, we're not an island. We have to be working with our neighboring cities and neighboring counties, but but we do have to be more aggressive in terms of what we're doing. As, as people call us and they ask us, when can we open up? When can we go back to work? You know, when can we walk in a park? Are our schools ever going to open up? They're going to open up. How are they going to open up? We need to be, uh, you know, aggressively working on these things and. And, 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 and leading as effectively as we possibly can because um, our communities, our, our society needs us right now. Um, you know, this is a silent enemy, but it's one of the most powerful, powerful enemies, I believe, that, 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 that uh, we've seen. Um, and look, we don't really know, meaning uh, there are some that I encounter that say, well, you know, maybe the mortality rate is much lower. Um, and maybe it is, but until we test and we have better information, we don't really know what's happening. Um, we do know that in New York, they figure about 25% of the population has already had it, and most of them survived it. So maybe it's not as dangerous um, as, as it would otherwise seem, but until you have information, everybody's just guessing. What we do know is that a lot of people have already died, um, and this is potentially a long way from being done. You know, there's countries like India that I believe have only just begun, even though, you know, it's not penetrated deeply. Once it does, it's going to be very hard to stop in certain environments. But here we, you know, we're in Santa Ana, middle of Orange County. Um, believe me, Mayor Sidhu is very worried about Disneyland and all the hotels and that whole the convention center and the economy, what are they going to do? I mean, I got a call from the California Angels saying, you know, Santa Ana is a very important community to us. There are a lot of baseball fans here. Well, a lot of Angel supporters here. What can we do to help you? So I think right now as a council, we need to be talking more to each other about this issue, coming up with more ideas and, and figure out how do we work not only as a city, uh, but effectively as a region um, and right now we're not getting, you know, strong support uh, from, from other uh, sectors, in particular the county. They're, they're sitting on $554 million. And the only reason they have that money, the only reason they have that money is because we are 3 million plus people here in Orange County. Now, I would, uh, you know, suggest to you all that we're a very odd county in the sense that the county county only has about 135,000 residents, <laughs> yet there's over 3 million people in the cities. So I would argue that that money should be going to the cities where the people are. We didn't receive it because we have a lot of bike trails. We received it because we have a lot of people. Most counties have the majority of the county as un unincorporated land with some incorporation within it. Orange County is a county at a different moment in time and we ought to consider what that means and i think again having our own public uh, health office, uh, official is maybe simply um you know a first step in trying to maybe reorganize the county a little bit and trying to be readier to respond to things such as this pandemic so um with that you know thank you for your kind comments 
Um, I will, you know, soon get you this plan that uh, Mayor Garcetti has put together. You know, we all gave a little bit of input, but really he did it. You know, they looked at 50 cities around the world. I think he's got a good idea. We're trying to coordinate with the governor. It's not good when the governor does things that are not in coordination with cities. And I think if we st stick together as cities, we can have a very, very loud voice, not only here in Orange County, but across the state. And, and ultimately beyond. But remember this, we're the fifth largest county in the country. We're bigger than most states. We're bigger than most countries in the world. If we were a country, we'd be somewhere around 45. And we have a lot of resources. We have to insist that they be deployed uh, efficiently and correctly. So with that, um, let me just thank you all uh, any any final comments from anybody? If not, uh, if there are no comments. We'll adjourn the meeting. Any final comments, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Um, the Peñaloza. the Angels are Los Angeles now, not not California, not California Angels. I'm sorry. They are, well, they to... they re really should be Anaheim. That's just Arnie Moreno <laughs> trying to make it Anaheim uh, Angels for the sure. Los Angeles <laughs> Angels. All no, right. I, I know they're not the California Angels, <laughs> but they, they really are the Anaheim Angels, but he won't let them use that name. They are. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you all. So let's uh, go ahead and adjourn this meeting. And thank you, staff, for all the hard work that you guys are doing. I know it's nonstop. I know, Christine, it's been a year now, a happy anniversary. I know this is probably not what you signed up for. But uh, sometimes we don't know what we're signing up for. But once we sign up, we do a great job. And you're, you're all doing a great job, especially our city manager and, and all the different roles that she's having to play right now. Thank you all. All right, this meeting is adjourned.